Good afternoon. We are back for the afternoon session of the Daryl Brooks sentencing. Hopefully y'all are doing okay that watched the morning session. This morning we heard, I think, 19 impact statements. We have, I think, 16 left to go. A number of them are going to be minors. So just know that you need to buckle up and um, and take a breath. And if you need to step away, that's okay. It is, it is okay to say, I can't right now. It's okay. Um, the court is hearing them. The court is going to be the one um, issuing sentence here. And if you need to take a moment, it is okay. There is nothing wrong with that. These are very, very hard things to sit through. And at the end of the day, you are choosing to hold space here and be in community here, but you don't have to. It's okay. And you don't have to apologize to me. I don't want anyone to say, Emily, I'm sorry, I've got to go. It's okay to just take a step away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie Flynn's asking a question over on the Facebooks. Hello, Facebooks. Why did the court abruptly stop? Because the court um, had a threat to the courthouse, a safety threat that they needed to address. And they did. So they took um, a little over an hour to address that. And when the court came back on the record this morning, and I think we've timestamped it in this morning, when the court came back this morning and addressed it, the court put it all on the record exactly what had happened. And there we are. So we are going to um, be going through the rest of the afternoon of impact statements. There was a tweet from Chanley Painter saying the court has heard 19 victim impact statements detailing the horror, trauma, and life-changing impacts that Daryl Brooks's actions had on their lives. Um, more to come when the court resumes with 26 remaining, including eight juveniles. So they they will be hard. Um, they are hard, but I think it's important to cover. I'm going to go ahead and roll our intro. For those of you that are new here, thank you. And remember, no threats of violence. Scene, we are back on. We are. Oh, we're back on the record. No intro appearances is happening. As they were before. Let's go to screen share. Um, I do want no to make threats just of a violence. Quick record. I am aware. I didn't realize I'd gotten an email this morning from one of my staff. The court's audio is there, an email but this morning from one of no video that Mr. Brooks's mother had written in requesting some Zoom information. Hold she on. provided some email addresses. I don't need the email addresses because we have simply provided the Zoom information to her to I provide hope. to the individuals that were Let me look indicated for in Mr. Brooks's list. Uh, but she did ask that the email addresses I mean, uh, I remain hear you. There we sealed, go. and she provided an example of what could be described as a threatening email to her. And so <sighs> based on that, I will have a redacted version of that email made available for the public record. It will have those email addresses. Um, Don't blocked. threaten the defendant's uh, and mother. The original will People. be filed under seal. Oh, uh, just again, given release it to the universe, y'all. Email and the reason just stated in the request. Yes, we've gone off of code red. It was, again, it was I glaring. didn't ask for the email addresses. They were provided, uh, but under the circumstances, I think that's appropriate. The judge has been more than respectful okay. With and mindful. With that, I presume the state has the next group available. So yes, we're ready to go, Your Honor. Thank you. For all of you um, you that are here, no threats of violence, threats of harm to the defendant, no wishing him ill On in November jail. 21st, you killed my mother. In this courtroom, I watched you run her Thank down you. and her broken body slide across the concrete. Oh, fuck. This woman loved and she was loved. You ran her down like she was nothing. And since that day, you have shown no remorse. He is pissed. You You're allowed to be no pissed. explanation for your atrocities. I receive your anger, sir. I hear it you. Well, me I don't receive it. That I you're sitting here breathing while she is it. not. The fair. You are a monster. Fair. You deserve contempt and death. Sadly, with no death penalty in this state, I can only hope they lock you away someplace so deep the rats chew on your fingers at night. Oh, shit. As for me, this will never be over until the day I'm pissing on your grave. I think it would be fair to say that for your crimes, even God hates you. Oh shit! Can um, you just tell me. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, he's done. He's angry. The son of victim. It's understandable Two. that he's angry. B. I think sometimes it's easier to empathize with anger. It's it's okay. But in the chat, um, if I could first thank the court. Uh, no threats. You, Your Honor, and your staff for getting us here today. I don't know how you did. If I uh, you kept this under four weeks. TOS. And uh, this is all going to be wrapped up, you know, before the first anniversary, and that means a lot. So I thank you for that. It does. And uh, if I could thank everybody at the prosecution table, our real-life Avengers, 
I mean, you guys did everything they you could for us, and I'm, I'm forever grateful. Thank you. And uh, That's kind. I couldn't not thank Jen Dunn and her staff. I mean, she took all of us, supported us, made us That's into a family, impact. and with, without them, I don't think I could have gotten through this trial. And Mr. Brooks, I hope as I read my statement, you continue to roll your eyes. Oh, I shit. hope you continue to laugh and they... just show how bored and unmoved you are by oh, all of this. They know what he was because doing. Because I this think morning. that's important. It's important for the world to see that evil can be a tangible, living, breathing thing. I think it's important for the world to see what human rot looks like. And to all the survivors, every time he puts his hand on that empty cavity where his heart should be, I hope you all smile and I hope you take solace in the fact that today is our day. Today is for us. Today is so we can take our handful of dirt, throw it on his grave, and move on. Because that's what we all need, and that's what we deserve. My name is Chris Owen, and I am the plaintiff. Holy I'm here shit. on behalf of another plaintiff, my mother, yes. Leanna Joy Owen. There you go. Lee Owen was a mother, a grandmother, a best friend, an apartment manager, and a dancing granny. The reason none of the witnesses saw her in this courtroom is because she was executed by a child-killing sex offender. And we are both injured parties. My whole family is an injured party. To my kids, Lee Owen was Nanny. And Nanny spoiled her grandkids every chance she got. On every birthday, she would call and sing happy birthday to their voicemail so they could hear it the first thing in the morning. She went on a tour of my son's summer camp. She danced in the same parades as my youngest daughter. She wanted my oldest daughter to use her car to learn how to drive so she could teach her like she taught me. And all of that has been ripped away. Yeah. But the defendant's conscience is clear. He said that in closing. To my dad, Lee Owen was the love of his life. They're using his words against him. They met him. when she was 16, and he taught her how to drive. From that point on, they stayed in each other's lives. And even though they divorced, she was still his best friend. They spent a lot of time together, and she was the only one that, who could get him out of the house. Now my dad has nightmares of her body flying through the air and shattering against concrete. But Mr. Brooks' conscience is clear. He said that. To my brother and I, Lee Owen was our mother. A mother who, even when she was str struggling, was always there for us. She was supportive of us. She always told us how proud she was of us. Growing up, all my friends and my brother's friends knew they were welcomed at our house. When they were in trouble, having problems at home, or just had to get away, she always let them stay as long as they needed to. And for years, every time I came home from the Marine Corps, she got all those same friends together so I could see everybody and spend time with them. Brooks, you have pissed off the she Marines. She was the one that made sure everyone got their Christmas list out on time. She made the best eggnog I ever had. And she made my grandma's mac and cheese whenever we were together. She recently renewed her passport so she could visit my wife and I in Turkey and travel the world with us. She also couldn't wait to visit Machu Picchu with my brother. It was her dream trip. Out of all the places in, in the world, that was the one place she had to visit before she died. And now the best we can do is lay her ashes there. But Daryl Brooks' conscience is clear. And I believe him. Out of everything he said in this courtroom, I believe that but is the one true. truth he told. I mean, how else could he make a witness look at each of his battered friends that he ran over and ask, how do you know who this is? Yeah. Throughout her life, Lee Owen was a hard-working woman. He, he did that. That's why when she found herself on hard times, she was able to overcome them. Even though it took years, she dug herself out of a deep financial hole so she could live the life she wanted, the life she deserved. And she was in the middle of doing just that on the evening of November 21st, 2021. And I know this is corny and cliche to say, but Lee Owen wasn't 71 years old. She was 71 years young. She was one of the most active people I knew. She just didn't have it in her to sit still. She always had to be moving or doing something, and this often involved people. She was very social and loved being around those she cared about, and people loved her back. Yep. She had a knack for making you feel good about yourself without even trying, because she always found the good in people. Even when it was to her detriment, it never dissuaded her from helping people any way she could. Without judgment, without demand for repayment or feeling she was owed anything. She did it because she knew it was the right thing to do and it made her feel good. She accepted people for who they were and made people feel good about themselves. That is what the world lost and you have the audacity to tell this court that your conscience is clear. Yep. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Brooks. Don't There's apologize. not a human with a soul on this planet who could snuff that light out, who could steal Lee Owen from this world and have a clear conscience. And that is why you hear the term monster. That is why you hear the term demon. You know, I saw you that day. It was just after you ran over the Catholics. I saw you hanging out of the window, looking back with a smile of satisfaction on your face. His window was down. Laughing at an inside joke that at the time I didn't get. The punchline escaping me. I didn't get it when my mom didn't respond to my texts. I didn't get it when she didn't answer my phone calls. I didn't get it the first couple hours my brother spent looking for. I didn't get it until my wife sent me a video of you running over children in the parade. Yeah. That's when I got the punchline. And it hit me like the red SUV, Mr. Brooks. I saw a pure, unrepentant evil in your face that day, and it disgusts me that you are allowed to exist. And I know the answer to the question that everyone keeps asking. I know why you did this. You did this simply because you were not in a cage. That is what I find mind-boggling. And how dare anyone say the system failed him? The system failed every one of us whose only mistake was to bring their families in the vicinity of Mr. Brooks. That poor excuse for a man should not have been on the streets. That is the failure, period. But enough about him. He's bringing it all up. Because today is not about him. It's about us and what we lost. I lost my mom, Lee Owen. Say and I it. wasn't always a good son. I could be selfish <sighs> sometimes. Oh, the I could be rolls. mean. But no matter how angry or standoffish I got, she would bend over backwards for me, even when I didn't deserve it. And now I can never tell her I'm sorry. She I can knows. never tell her I should have been more grateful. I can never tell her how much I need her in my life. Yeah, shake your head. Shake your head. You know, because that is what you took from me. And there's, there's nothing this court can do that would provide justice in my eyes. So all I ask is that you rot, and you rot slow. Yeah, he was sitting there rolling his eyes, and he got called the fuck out about it. Which is fair. People heal in different ways. People express themselves in different ways. And you know what? Being... I don't know why the volume just went down, but being able to allow people thank, thank you for the opportunity to uh, share how angry they are and, uh, is just as fair as people sharing the hurt. Acquaintances of uh, the folks associated with this uh, with this horrible case. Um, my name is Michael Carlson, and I'm appearing here today both as an individual and a brother uh, to one of the victims of November 21st. I'm here today as well as a plaintiff joining a criminal complaint against Mr. Brooks. Oh, the, with a claim the against him for the damage that he has brought not only the to Waukesha, but to my family. Thank you, sir. And I'm also appearing as a posthumous spokesman for the victim, my sister Tamara Durant, who can't appear here today on her own behalf. Because you because killed Mr. her. Brooks killed her. In my personal aspect, I wish I could as easily forget about Mr. Brooks as he has seemingly forgotten about himself. Oh. Every day since November 21st has been, been, been framed by what he did in my own life, in our family's life. It is the reality I wake to. It is the reality I head to work to. Oh, he really clapped his hands. It is the reality I confront as I try to fall asleep. It's the reality I confront as I go about the things I do during the day, my attempts to work, attempts to manage a household and be present for my children and maintaining any sort of notion of normalcy in our life. But all these actions are simply a pantomime, Mr. Brooks, to forget that my sister was so stupidly and so needlessly killed by you. Perhaps you can forget what you did, but I can't. November 21 looms as a ground zero day in the story of my life, as I know it does in the life of so many others. <clears throat> I appear today also as a plaintiff. Mr. Brooks, you Good asked the you. court to identify a plaintiff many times during the, the course of the Good trial. Good for you. Here I am. I'm one of many. We the people have brought this case and these judgments against you, Mr. Brooks. 
They reflect our values as a people and are enacted through laws passed by our legislatures, enforced by our law, law enforcement, and, and administered Get through it, our sir. courts. We the people find you guilty. A lifetime is a long time to think and to spout nonsense. And Mr. Brooks, I want you to take no comfort in your, in your future here in this comic book cartoon world that you've created for yourself involving, involving the flags and, and barcodes and like, birth we, certificates. We see your bullshit. This is all nonsense. The stuff of teenage boys on the internet. We call your bullshit. That's not why you're here today. That's not why we're here today. We're here today and you are here today because you got in a car and instead of hitting the brakes, Tell him. ran over children, elderly, and my sister, Tamara. He's like, sir, in case you were still I don't want confused. you to live in the comfort of that delusion as you live there in the court, mm -hmm. as you live there in the prison, convincing yourself that you're the victim of something, of some crazy internet conspiracy. You're not Mr. Brooks. You're guilty only of your own actions on that day, actions that you had an infinite number of times to stop. Yep. Any number of times you could have just hit those brakes, turned the other direction. As it stands, I'm, not a, pla I'm a plaintiff, but I'm not a victim. The victim is Tamara Durand, my sister. She can't appear, appear her on her own behalf because she's dead. She died when Mr. Brooks killed her on November 21st. Because Tamara cannot be here to speak, I will speak for her. Daryl Brooks, you took my life. I wish you hadn't. I had people to live for, people who needed me. My parents who are aging, my children who need their mother to help them make sense of their worlds, to cheer them on, to help them into their adulthood, to become friends with them. I have my grandson who relies on me, his grandmother, as much as I relied upon my own grandmother as I was growing up. I had people who needed me, people who needed me to cheer them on, to have me bring goodwill to the hospital bed where they were in, or their families in the waiting room, who needed the comfort and prayers I brought to them in their moments of pain. I have friends who near to hear from me and families that need my early morning phone calls. I had places I wanted to see and things I needed to do. The only saving grace is I didn't know what hit me and who would have ever guessed? Who could ever believe it? It's no surprise to anyone who knew me. After you hit me in that car, I got back up and kept dancing. I hardly skipped a beat. I didn't know you, Mr. Brooks. If the picture were reversed, if you were the stranger in the street in pain, needing care or comfort, know that I would have helped you. I ran towards pain and I ran into danger in my life. All you had to do was ask and you might have danced along with us. It was a parade after all. We both died in vain on November 21st, Mr. Brooks. I died to life and you now die to the world. We leave lives behind, family behind, children behind us. We both leave dreams, we leave choices, we leave successes. We leave failures behind us. I die to mine in an instant. You die to yours over countless days. May the God I'm with grant you the courage to confront what you've done and to remember your own name. It's the least you might do for all these that you've left behind us who will never, who can never forget. Mr. Brooks, I'd also like to acknowledge that over these last couple months, I've sent you a couple letters in prison. Oh. urging you to stand up, to be a man, to grow up, to accept accountability for what you've done. I also use those letters to share with you the love of the God that I believe in and that I know my sister Tamara believed in. I use those letters to share with you, especially the story of the final act of Christ on the cross, where he is hanging between two murderers, and he turns to the one and he, and, and he give, gives them forgiveness. I urge you to remember, Mr. Brooks, that there were two murderers on that day. 
one who mocked the holy living in God, and one who accepted accountability for who he was. Mr. Brooks, you're the one Your who Honor, mocked them. I urge you to provide Mr. Brooks a lifetime Reminder. in prison to please contemplate that story and to remember his name and to contemplate which side of Christ he wishes to hang on. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, sir. That was tremendously powerful. Everything. What do you have to say, sir? The family of victim A is going to speak next. Um, they do have some minors with them, so I'd just like to give the um, camera a second to adjust for that. And also, one of the minors um, does wish to make a statement and is somewhat vertically challenged. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if she should stand over so that you may see her or... Can you get her a chair? Um, sure. Oh, sure. Taken out before I ha uh, have them come up. I believe Mr. Brooks was uh, attempting to get the court's attention. So let me address him quickly. D yeah. Um, I wanted the uh, order of the court, if I may, really quick, pertaining to the um, what the last speaker. I have an issue with. Oh, the issues would, I have. If it pleases the court, we can address it later, or if you want to. You can address it later. Mr. Brooks, sure. this is, these are sentencing remarks. I'm not going to interrupt those sentencing remarks to have you address him individually. No, I'm not talking about addressing him individually. Can you not? Can you just not? Sir? Mr. Brooks, we're going to continue. I'm not sure what you could possibly bring have. to the court's attention about a speaker who's already made a statement. Nothing. You're right, Your Honor. Nothing. Not an issue that I can bring. No. To, no. You can put it in writing, sir, while you're yep. sitting there. And if it's something I need to address, I will. Good job, I'm Your not Honor. I'm going to disrupt what's happening right now to address that. You need to put it in writing. Yeah. Pause, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Clip. Uh, Ms. So, so put it nothing. In writing that. Brooks, Clip. Please put it in writing. That's, the same, paper, that's the same person you had to work with the father of, right? Go Not ahead. today, Miss um, Dunn. Well, there is a child who cannot reach the mic who wants to talk, and you're sitting here with this nonsense. You can see the judge is just done. Just done. Not today. Like I said, the, record the same speaks person. Positions were previously put on the record. There's no need for you to make any that commentary is him though, about right? it. I don't know he what's happening. His father though, right? Mr. Brooks, stop. If you interrupt me again, yeah. you're going to risk going into the other courtroom. I'm not going to have so you hold degrade me the integrity of these proceedings. I'm not, I'm not attempting to cause a controversy. I just right wanted to know. That by the, once again trying to derail what's happening. Man, and take you the always focus talk off. about somebody trying to derail something. As if that, no. that was the plan, like somebody no. coming here Brooks, to derail something. I'm advising something. you to be quieter. I will clear this courtroom Sir, under Illinois up. versus Allen. You will lose your right to be present while he the remainder of He wants to not be present. Make him be present. Statements. Okay, well, come on with it. No. Once they start, I expect you to come be quiet. Come on with it. No. Because that, that's what you've no. been waiting to do the whole listen time. Listen to shit. Listen up and listen to what she has to say. All right. God damn. Oh, shit. Sir, you're going to have to be removed. I'm sorry. I can't tolerate that from anyone. Mr. Brooks, my tolerance from him to you is the next person's going to get up and they're going to start their statement. And okay, yeah, but you made it seem like I'm trying to purposely interrupt that. Mr. Brooks? And that's I don't think I'm that that's fair to, to do that. Please be quiet. Okay. Yeah, I still have the uh, First no. Amendment right to be heard and no, to, you and do to, be, not. to speak. I still have that right. Mr. Brooks, this is a sentencing hearing. I don't the care what it is. is. You're not going to continue. He is arguing you're not, with me. He is no. now You're not going to continue. You're not going to continue. The he's moved to the next courtroom, and I'll make the appropriate findings when I'm able to do that. So can I get a finding of fact? Can I get a legal finding of fact? Because I don't agree to a stop it. You can't get a legal finding of fact. You can get a legal finding of shut the fuck up. The fact, the fact that there is a kid waiting to give an impact statement next is just the worst. I'm going to rewind. Uh, some, I don't know what the fuck happened. It, he had stopped. He was writing. And then everything stopped again. So I'm going to back it up because uh, I, I truly am stunned. Like, it seemed like the court was moving on. And then the, the off with the wheels. So we're going to just back up. We're going to back it up a little bit. Um... Cause I don't know, I don't know what happened and I need to watch it again. We need the replay. I, 
What just camera happened? Camera second to adjust for that. Okay. It's the least you might do for all these that you've left behind us who uh, will never, who can I'm never stunned. forget. Mr. Brooks, I'd also like to acknowledge that over these last couple oh, months, no, we've I've seen seen you a couple I'm sorry to fast forward. To grow to share with you the love of the God that <laughs> with you, especially the story of the final act of Christ on the cross. Okay. I backed up too far, and I don't want to miss anything when they um, when they resume. So, <sighs> yeah, that last speaker got to him because he the spoke the truth. Family of the victim truth. A is going to speak next. Um, they do have some minors with them, so I just like to give the um, camera a second to adjust for that. And also, one of the minors. Um, does wish to make a statement and is somewhat vertically challenged. So um, the minor can't reach I'm wondering the if she should stand over so that you may see her or... Um, sure. She... Taken up. Before I ha uh, have them come up, I believe Mr. Brooks was uh, attempting to get the court's attention. So let me address him quickly. Um, I wanted the uh, order of the court, if I may, really quick, pertaining to the... Um, the last speaker I have an issue with if you would if it pleases the court we can address it later or if you want to address it now I don't Mr. Sure. Rose, this is, these are sentencing remarks I'm not going to interrupt I wish you would have just said address it later have you addressed him individually no, I wish you would have just said later addressing him individually I wish you would have just said we'll address it later I, w I wish that's what would have happened we're continue I'm not sure what you could possibly bring to the court's attention about a speaker who's already made a statement? A very valid issue that I can bring to the you court. You can put it in writing, sir, while you're sitting there. And if it's something I need to address, I will. But I'm not going Fair. to disrupt what's happening right now to address that. You need to put it in writing. Good. All right, go ahead, uh, Ms. So put it in writing that. Mr. Brooks. Please put it in writing. And I so thought we were good. Paper That's the same person you had to work with the father of right go ahead um Ms. wait Dunn. what did he say he said that's the same person you worked with hold on i want to know what he said Paper that's the same person you had to work with the father of right go ahead um, he said that's the same person you worked with the father of um I mean, it's it's not a huge community. I imagine if his dad was a lawyer, it's possible. Who cares? He's a, he's a victim. He's allowed to make a victim impact statement. Even if the judge worked with the father, it doesn't matter. Today is not about your nonsense, sir. Mr. Brooks, please put it in writing. That's, the same, paper, that's then. the same person you had to work with the father of, right? Go ahead, um, Ms. Dunn. And then I thought we were starting. I thought we were, I thought we were good. It seemed like they were waiting for the next statement. Like I said, the record the same speaks for itself. All of those issues were previously put on the record. There's no need for you to make any that commentary is him, though, about right? it. You did work with his father though, right? Mr. Brooks, stop. If you interrupt me again, yeah. you're gonna risk going into the other courtroom. I'm not gonna have you, so you gonna hold degrade me the integrity of these proceedings. I'm not, I'm not attempting the to cause of what's going on right I just now. wanted to know. That I'm the, once again trying to derail what's happening. And, and take you the always focus talk about of, somebody trying to derail something as if that, that was the plan, like somebody coming Mr. here Brooks, to derail something. I'm advising something. you to be quiet or, or I will clear this courtroom and under Illinois versus Allen, you will lose your right to be present while the remainder of these individuals give their statements. Okay, well, come on with it. Once they start, I expect you to be Come on quiet. with it, because that, that's what you've been waiting to do the whole time. Let's some shit. Listen up and listen what she has to say. All right. God damn. Sir, you're going to have to be removed. I'm I imagine sorry. that's the individual that already made his impact statement. Anyone. Mr. Brooks, my admonishment to you is the next person's going to get up and they're going to start their statement. And okay, yeah, but you made it seem like I'm trying to purposely interrupt that. Mr. Brooks? And that's, I don't think I'm that that's fair to, to do that. But you are. Please be quiet. Okay. Yeah, I still have the uh, First Amendment right to be heard and to, and to be to speak. 
I still have that right. Mr. Brooks, this is a sentencing hearing. I don't the care what it is. is. You're not right. going to continue. He is arguing you're with not, me. He is now formally You're not going to continue. You're not going to continue. The courtroom. Move to the next okay. courtroom and I'll make the appropriate All findings right. when I'm able to. Let me go catch up on this. To do that so can I get a finding effect? Can I get a I'm legal finding effect? Because I don't agree to a stop it. Somebody in the gallery yelled, listen up and listen to her, you piece of shit. Something oh. to that effect. And oh. uh, him attempting to Hold address on. an issue. So we're about 30 seconds behind. First of all, we are back on the record. Mr. Brooks has been removed to the other courtroom. Where he can Mr. be Brooks, muted. you're not muted, so if you're going to keep talking, I'll have to care, mute you. I don't care about me. All right, so I've muted him, as you can see. I think here, he wanted to be removed. Um, he was not so muted he can act up. initially. Um, I will advise there is a headset next to him should he wish to uh, put those on. Uh, this court, frankly, acted a bit more swiftly than I have in the past due to the nature of the proceedings, the history of Mr. Brooks's outbursts during the trial, and... Uh, him attempting to address an issue that was addressed by this court the very first time I ever uh, had Mr. Brooks in the courtroom dealing with um, Victor you don't need to address C's it. father and, a, and this court uh, certainly working with him in the past. I stand by the record that was made at that time. Don't address it. All of that was put on the record and um, it's not an issue this court, frankly, needs to address today. It is, frankly, a blatant attempt by Mr. Brooks to be disruptive, uh, to take the focus off of what I think is some very emotionally charged victim uh, statements here today from uh, those who have been involved with the dancing grannies and uh, people who lost their lives on November 21 of 2021. Um, I warned him a couple of times, even in my words, backtracked a little, told him I would have the state uh, put, have the next victim make the statement. And if he then interrupted, I would have him removed. Um, he wanted to debate with me. He interrupted me repeatedly. And at that point, <clears throat> there was also an outburst by a member of the gallery. I addressed that. Um, and uh, then I indicated the courtroom would uh, be cleared. Um, I think I owe it to the individual who was kicked out because I've given Mr. Brooks this opportunity yes. on many occasions. If that individual would like to come back into the yes. courtroom and can do so respectfully without an outburst, they are invited back in by this court. Yes, good. Mr. Brooks, I will also advise right you that you are welcome back into this courtroom if you can abide by the rules of decorum and civility. Um, while you have a right to be present for this sentencing hearing, you do not have a right uh, to interrupt the court, to disrupt the court, uh, and to be defiant, which is how I would describe your very recent behavior. Um, and that is why this court, under the authority in Illinois versus Allen, uh, did remove you from the courtroom. I have the ability, of course, with the technology, he's able to hear, he's able to see, we are able to see him. He's muted right now. He can mute him. Um, and uh, while I attempted to have him appear without being muted, he uh, spoke over me. Um, if he wants to come back in before it is his turn to I speak to the court and present uh, individuals She's who done this to a speak on times. his behalf, he needs to simply ask the bailiff and then, of course, uh, abide by the rules of yep, civility yep, yep. and decorum. Um, it's of course, a very emotional day for many people here, if not all. Um, and I think even more today than any other day. Yes. Um, respect needs to be what guides everyone in this courtroom um, and not interrupting and not having outbursts, no matter how difficult the situation may get at respect times. Respect from him. So I've made the record. Um, I will unmute. Um, I'm going to slow down because he talks fast. If there is any interruption whatsoever, I'll have to... Uh, mute him once again. So the unmute is off. And once again, I've confirmed that the technology is working and um, he can still hear. Um, all right. What do you need to do? Yes. Whoever was in the gallery was invited back. Um, the court's not going to take tape his mouth shut. I see a lot of people saying just gag him. This court's not going to do that when technology allows her to remove him. 
He will be able to hear. He may not be able to see the individuals speaking. I would note all, the podium is behind him in any event, and I don't believe he's turned back at all during this hearing. And, he is not. Um, it's standard, really, protocol for an inmate to remain looking forward, so I don't see any issue with that. He will be able to hear. hear. Um, with that, um, we, we will need to screen share um, for the next speakers, Your Honor. There's some photos that we'd like to display just to right. give you a heads up on that. I believe Madam Clerk will be able to do that for us. <coughs> I'm going to try to zoom, zoom a little bit. Let me get that up and running then. So it can catch up to real time. The next person can come on up. Looks like it's working. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. As a reminder, if you would at least let me know your name if you want to or son of victim so-and-so, that would be very helpful as I am trying to take notes of everyone who is making a statement. Um, no, you are not muted. I expect you to be quiet as the <sighs> proceedings continue. I was just asking was I muted. I didn't know. You just said I was muted. All the DAs I'm sorry for the interruption, sir. Please done. continue. Or please start. All the DAs look exhausted. My name is Marshall Sorensen, and I am son to a murdered mother, Virginia Sorensen. On a day that I was planning to put up a Christmas tree with my family, I received a call from my dad that would turn my whole family's world upside down. When I answered the phone, my dad told me something happened to your mother during the parade and she didn't make it. I said, what, what do you mean, mean she didn't make it? My dad proceeded to tell me that she was killed. Of course, I didn't believe him at first, but when I hung up the phone, reality set in. As I wiped the tears from my eyes, I thought to myself how I was going to tell my two little girls as they wait in the other room to put up the Christmas tree that they will never see their grandma again. As a parent, one of the hardest things to endure is to see your family in pain. Witnessing my daughter's hearts get shattered into a million pieces in an instant that night, trying to understand what happened to their Grammy is something I wish to this day I could make go away. I love my mom unconditionally and so did my family. My mom would jump at the opportunities to spend time with my daughters. I was blessed with having that opportunity with my mom, but my girls were cheated out of that because of the acts of one evil person. Mr. Brooks, you had mentioned that you will never get to be able to get the chance to hold your grandchild. To that, I say good. Maybe then, while you're locked behind bars, you will experience a little bit of the pain that you inflicted on six families when you killed their loved ones during a Christmas parade. My family will never get the chance to hug my mom one last time and say goodbye because of your actions. You will never understand what you took from my family and by your actions in court, you don't seem to care either. You murdered my mom and for that reason, I'm asking the judge to sentence you to life in prison without parole. I continue to have a hard time understanding why such a loving person like my mom had her life ended in a tragic way but I do have some peace knowing that she left this earth doing something she loved. I encourage people now, after a year, that if someone asks you how my mom died, Virginia Sorensen, that you respond with, let me tell you how she lived, because that is what made her so special to so many people. When I was a kid, most of my superheroes wore capes. As of today, myself and family, we have a new one and she wears a robe. Thank you, Judge Darrow. Words cannot express my family's gratitude with the time and effort you put into this trial. I want to also thank Sue, Zach, Leslie, Detective Casey, Jen, Pepper, the witnesses, the jury, for the sacrifices they made so justice could be served. Lastly, I want to thank the city of Waukesha for their community of love and support they displayed towards our family during this time. Going forward, my family re will refuse to live in fear because of the acts of one evil person. My family will continue to attend parades and at this year's Waukesha Christmas Parade, we plan on walking with the dancing grannies. We will do this in remembrance of my mom and show that we are stronger together. 
I ask you today to please remember the picture shown on the screen during this year's Waukesha Christmas Parade. This picture was taken before a previous parade. My hope for you is that it reminds you of the true representation of what the Waukesha Christmas Parade stood for before this tragic event, which is the unconditional love between families while celebrating the spirit of Christmas. May angels watch over you and you remain strong. I would like now to bring up my daughter, Brooke, to say a couple words about her grandma. She held the banner with my mom at previous parades as shown in the picture above. Court TV is doing a really good job making sure that minors aren't shown. Brooks, do not say a word. <sighs> oh, he can hear. He can hear in that courtroom. Thank you for being here, young lady. What would you like to tell me? Oh, the judge. Hello, my name is Brooke Sorensen. I'm Virginia Sorensen's granddaughter. The things I the, the things I miss about my grandma are me and my sister Mackenzie doing foot races around the driveway, and my grandma would do commentary and time us. <laughs> she always she always cheered us on at all of our activities. I would DJ at dancing granny parties and carry the banner at parades with my she grandpa while DJ. Grammy danced. When we would get on the school bus, she would say reading is the key to learning to be nice, kind, brave, and angels watch over you. After school, we would talk on the porch. Other times when we came when we came over to our house, we would play games together, go to the playground, have drawing contests, dance parties, and work on granny routines. She would give us snacks when we watched some of our favorite movies like Polar Express and Coco. When we first found out that she was gone, I started to cry, and I would cry every night. I missed her so much, and still do today. Daryl Brooks, you took her from me, my sister, and my family. The things we will miss the most are not seeing her again, her smile, her laugh, being able to talk to her, and doing fun things with her. My sister and I pray every night for our Grammy and our family. Grammy, I'll see you in my dreams. Oh. The judge is like, I'm trying. The, yep. You can see her. Being She's told like, Mr. Brooks would like to come back. Before I do that, sir, I need a pledge from you that you will abide by the. Not a pledge. Not rules another of pledge. And decorum, and you will not interrupt. Can you, you do can that, hear sir? the hurt and the frustration? I'm not going to interrupt. All right, then I will give him that opportunity <sighs> to come back. We'll clear the courtroom while we do that. I love Thank that her Lord. grandma gave Take commentary on the foot races. I absolutely love it. I just love it. I love. I love that part of their impact statements are getting to have, um, getting to share with everyone who's heard the names and heard how they died, how they lived. And that's a really powerful thing. The last, um, that the child who just spoke, her father had said, let me tell you about how my mom lived. And that is what these impact statements are about. It's about, telling the court what was taken and telling the court um and in this case the world because it's streaming who who people were so um let's see we've got a a statement from Waukesha that Chanley Painter here now I can catch up to real time that Chanley Painter shared over on Twitter let me pull that up real quick regarding the threats to safety earlier today so we'll get that in a minute um, you know, we're all just going to ugly cry together. It's what we're here for to spend the day just as law nerds talking about it. I, I really, Ooh, I really wish uh, the judge would just leave him in the other courtroom, but if he doesn't interrupt, it might be cathartic for those who are speaking to him to speak to him. Um, and that might really be the point here, but I hope he doesn't start interrupting again and do this back and forth in the courtroom thing. So shared by Chanley Painter over at Court TV, here's the Waukesha County Sheriff's Office press release regarding threats against the courthouse, November 15th, 2022, um, threats against courthouse. On Tuesday, November 15th at 9.40 a.m., the Waukesha County Communications Center received a phone call in which an unknown individual threatened a mass incident. I can't read the words on the YouTubes and, and triggered... Um, threatened a mass incident at the courthouse. Security at the courthouse and on the county grounds were increased. 
The Brooks sentencing hearing was temporarily recessed, but resumed a short time later. The threat is currently under investigation by the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department with the assistance of the FBI and the City of Waukesha Police Department. Anyone that is visiting the courthouse should anticipate increased times for security checks. Uh, security checks. We want to thank the public for their patience during this minor disruption. I imagine that's going to disrupt court proceedings today and in the days going forward because there will be sentencing tomorrow. And I hope that they catch, um, and they generally are pretty good at tracking those things, whoever called that in. Um, as just a reminder to the chat, I know that it's difficult. I know that in cases like this, um, the feelings are high. Thank you for not making uh, threats of harm against the defendant, threats of harm to the defendant. I get it. We're letting the victims have their say and we can we can be like, I hear you. The victims are speaking their feelings. They echo a lot of our feelings. But also, um, particularly on YouTube, things said in the chat can also impact my channel. So not only is it the law nerdy thing to do, but it also protects this channel because things, particularly threats in the chat, can impact the channel. So Thank you for understanding not just is that the way we do things as law nerds, even, even when we just agree with the victims here, um, it's okay to just say, uh, Daryl Brooks is not my favorite. Not at all. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. Um, and then the mods are letting me know people keep asking about the jury. No, the jury's job is done. So in criminal cases in the U.S., you get the, um, the jury part where the jury decides the facts, the jury decides the facts of the case. And they've done that in this case. Uh, they found him guilty on all counts. Now it is the judge's role for sentencing. The judge is in charge of the sentencing. It doesn't mean the jury, the jury's done. They can watch this on TV. I don't think there's room for them to be present in the courtroom, but they could watch this streaming if they chose to. They are probably already heartbroken after having to sit through this case and might not want to, but they can watch this if they choose to. Um, and they get to been so. advised that there may be an issue with the screen in front of oh, Mr. Good. Brooks, but I would note that the large monitor that's directly above Mr. The Brooks, we don't give a flying other monitor, fuck about your screen. Which is closer to Mr. Brooks behind. You had uh, your window down. Has been working the entire time. You drove through the band um, and the grannies with your windows Zach down. Maybe coming in to look at it, but we'll keep going while that happens, since uh, we are able to see and hear that way through. Yeah, he's monitors. going to get life, so, a lot um, of life sentences. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. He looks pissed. And I can feel I feel it. Look, look. Everybody is going to have their own way to process this, and we're watching a bunch of different ways to process this. Cause that disruption. From anger and grief to sharing the stories of life. We're seeing kind of the Can the state put something the wide gamut. up and I'll <sighs> so. Um, him being in the courtroom might help some of the victims. It might. You can tell how angry they are, and they have. Okay, great. He, it's working. He slaughtered their family members right, my with a car. Apologies, sir, for that. And he has the audacity to sit and laugh, to joke, to roll his eyes. All right. Well, there's nothing on. Yeah. To fuck around. There's nothing on it at the moment. Okay. Yeah, as long as you. To wear a mask backwards to show he doesn't really need to be wearing a mask or care. No, we're gonna keep. No, going, you're gonna shut up. I just, I just wanted to. Apologize for it. No. That's, Apologize that's to the people you killed. All right. I appreciate that, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you. No one I wants really to do. hear from you, dude. All right. Go ahead, sir. My name is Sean Sorensen, Virginia Sorensen's oldest son. You can feel. You can Without feel warning, it. On a joy-filled Sunday in November, our family and others were devastated by an unfathomable act of evil. My mother, Virginia Sorensen, Jenny, a loving and devoted grandmother to six, mother to three, sister to three, and wife of 56 years to my father and friend to countless others, was taken from us for no comprehensible reason. My mom didn't let her age of 79 slow her down, be it the dancing grannies, her horses, dogs, cats, chickens, travel, working as a medical records nurse, holiday get-togethers, the occasional brandy old-fashioned, and having sleepovers and movie parties with her grandchildren. She enjoyed the company of, of others 
and was always up for an adventure. It's tremendous. She never tired of listening to her grandchildren's dreams and inspiring them to shoot for the stars. She was so proud of all six of them in this photo. Carter, Claire, Gabrielle, Savannah, Brooke, and Mackenzie. She was killed doing something she loved and enjoyed with the dancing grannies. And although we were denied the chance to be her with her when she passed, we know she was surrounded by friends and the caring strangers who sought to save her life. So we find comfort that she not die alone. She was a compassionate person. She was always telling us, God bless you, or angels watch over you. She will be missed with an aching emptiness in all our hearts. Judge Doro, thank you for overseeing this trial. You define excellence in your profession, and we are so grateful you were assigned to this case. Thank you to the 12 jurors of this strong community who carefully and unbiasedly listened to the evidence and brought back 76 guilty verdicts. Thank you, Sue Opper, Leslie Basie, Zach Wichow, and the entire Waukesha District Attorney's team for ensuring Mr. Brooks would not escape the consequences of his despicable actions. Thank you, Detective Tom Casey, and the many law enforcement officers of Waukesha and other jurisdictions who investigated, collected evidence, and testified to ensure Dale Brooks will never be a free man. This is live. Detective Casey came to my dad's house in the early morning hours of November 22nd Ooh. to deliver the heart-wrenching confirmation that my mother had passed. It's not a and he has greeted us one. every day in court since then. I want to thank the Victim Witness Program, Jen Dunn, her staff, and their best comfort dog, Pepper, for their kindness and constant comfort to all the families affected this past year. She and her office have been a rock for us to cling to when events have threatened to emotionally overwhelm us. I want to thank the Waukesha Women's Center for supporting Corey Runkle and Erica Patterson in their testimony against Mr. Brooks and his abuse and the good that the center does for other abused women. I want to thank the first responders and medical personnel at the parade who rendered aid to the injured and attempted to save my mother's life that night. And a nurse that we met at the memorial one night by chance, Sarah, who held my mother's hand that night. But she was already dead. A severed spine, multiple skull fractures, pelvic fractures, and her Christmas hat wedged under the windshield wipers of the Ford SUV. There was no ambulance ride or hospital stay. She was gone in a split seconds after Mr. Brooks smashed into her, but she will live on forever in our hearts. Finally, I would like to thank the Waukesha community and thousands of others for their outpouring of love and prayers to the families and victims of this unspeakable tragedy. I have few words for Mr. Brooks. Just saying that name brings anger and hatred into my heart. And I want to move forward after this sentencing with the happy memories I hold of my mother. I sat silently almost every day in this courtroom, bit my tongue, restrained myself from jumping over this divide to administer my thoughts of justice. As Mr. Brooks droned on about where the plaintiff That's was the in this case, don't roll your who eyes. the plaintiff that is the was truth. in this case. You've already heard. That is the there truth. are many plaintiffs here. I'm here right now. I've been here all along. And now he gets to hear from me and we'll hear from many other plaintiffs before this day is over. He is simply a repulsive man who has shown zero remorse for his actions and depraved indifference to life. His fake tears in court were never for those harmed, yep. but only for himself and the freedom he has lost. His narcissistic behavior, He's got your number, disgusting sir. trial antics, and defiance to accept any accountability displays how truly unworthy he is of anyone's forgiveness.
Well, we lost my mom instantly. I hope his 76 sentences pass in a slow, miserable, depressing existence as a reminder of the many lives he shattered. There are two others I hold culpable in my mother's murder. Dawn Woods, the mother who knew her son's felonious criminal history and penchant for violence, yet bailed him out of jail for $1,000 after he insulted Erica Patterson by running her over with Miss Woods' Ford Escape. She continued to allow him to drive it and enabled his violence and murders that Sunday afternoon. The other is John Chisholm, the Milwaukee County District Attorney, whose Ooh. misguided and ill-conceived bail reform policies led a violent, multi-convicted felon back into our community and onto our streets while already out on bail from a previous violent felony. Mr. Chisholm disregarded his duty to keep the people of this community and state safe from repeat criminal offenders and allowed a career criminal to snuff out six innocent lives. He is a coward who hides from the accountability for his office's negligence. If he had a tiny, single sliver of integrity, he would resign. Not once has Mr. Chisholm said three simple words to these victims and families. I am sorry. At least Miss Woods in her many media interviews has a humanity and understanding to say those words to the families affected. Six families have been bound together forever in grief. Six families have lost loved ones who are cherished and can never be replaced, but forever remembered with love. Six names I will now never forget. Jane, Jackson, Bill, Tammy, Lee, and Ginny. As my mom was fond of saying, may angels watch over us. And I know now there are six more watching over us. Judge Doral, my request is simple. All. Maximum terms of imprisonment. All. Every single charge. Life without parole for all six counts of intentional homicide. Thank you and all who played a role in bringing justice to the families and this community. He didn't need to yell for the anger he has to be felt. And it clearly made Brooks very, very uncomfortable. Um, and he spoke everything he had to say with power and with respect. And you knew how mad he was. There was, no, there was nothing else to say. I'm David Sorensen, Virginia Sorensen's husband of 56 years. And I'm wearing this dancing granny sweatshirt in her memory. Sir, it looks good on you. We like you it. Thank you, first of all. Thank you, Judge Doral. You earned your angel wings in this trial. Thank you to the jurors and those who testified who had to experience the horror of November 21st of last year all over again. Thank you, District Attorney Sue Upper, Leslie, Zach, and her excellent team. Thank you to Tom Casey, Waukesha Law Enforcement, first responders both on and off duty at the parade, medical personnel at the parade and the area hospitals that cared for the injured. Thank you, Jan Dunn, and your caring team in the victim witness office, especially my new furry friend, Pepper. Pepper's Here's the, a thank the you that nobody knows about. Thank you to J.J. Watt. He's a professional football player for the Arizona Cardinals who gave up, gave this community um, money for funerals for the victims. Really? Six family funerals. I didn't know that. Finally, thank you to the kind and compassionate people of Waukesha County, state of Wisconsin and others from around the country and the world who have helped the victims of the Waukesha Christmas Parade find comfort, shared in their loss and sorrow, prayed for the injured, and offered words of caring so that we may heal both physically and mentally. Although I have very specific thoughts on how I and the parade families would want revenge on the convicted for what he did, I hand over his fate now to God. 
So I will let God determine the revenge I ask for, be it a week, a month, a year, a lifetime. I think it's fair to say the convicted is an evil animal, and I hope that God's wrath falls upon him. It actually started before the trial did, because he took away his own God-given name. He didn't want to be known by his name. Refused to accept him. I refuse to accept him as a person that deserves compassion or mercy. I too regret Wisconsin does not have the death penalty because if someone ever deserved it, the convicted most certainly does. Life in prison is too kind. That Bible on your table will not do you any good for where you will end up. I have struggled this past year with Jenny's loss. It was to be her last parade. She was going to retire. <clears throat> I will continue to struggle with the loss. I am lucky to have family to care for me and wrap me in love so that I can start to glue together the shattered life I now have. I know Jenny probably saved our two granddaughters who sit behind me their lives by carrying the banner that day in their place, and I thank God for that. The life that Jenny and I built over 56 years of marriage was forever altered nearly a year ago. I will carry on in this new life with help from my family and friends. The life I was once able to share with Jenny is gone, but it has strengthened my family's closeness and in a way made us stronger for the great challenges we have ahead of us. I feel sorry she will not be able to hold a great grandchild or see all of her children, grandchildren be successful in life. But I pray to her and know she is watching over us. My Christian faith and church have helped me cope with my sadness and find hope and love over hate. My friends have lifted me up in their prayers. My family carries my burden with me. My dogs at home give me a small measure of comfort when I am in need. Angels will watch over all of us and give us strength. Now I want you to use your imagination a little bit. When it thunders, I imagine that Jackson is blasting a home run over the fence. When there is a rainbow, I will imagine the dancing grannies, Jenny, Tammy, Lee, and Bill, with them dancing along its lines. When there's a ray of sunshine poking through the clouds, I will imagine it is Jane smiling down on us. When it snows like it did this morning, I will imagine God's love giving us a blanket in comfort. When I see a blue light, I see this community's commitment to help heal and support each other. Judge, you have witnessed the same evil I have. You have endured a very emotional and draining that trial as I have. I ask for the full punishment within your power. I ask you to send this evil animal to life in prison with no chance for parole for the callous murder of my wife and five others and injuring 61 others. He should never have the opportunity to hurt another person and has forfeited his right to be a free man ever again by his violent actions against innocent lives, both young and old. You are a very evil, evil animal. Amen. Ooh, the disrespect from this defendant. But again, Thank you. the victim impact statements, <clears throat> there aren't a lot of parameters I for it because... very brief statement guilt, from a young woman who was marching with the grannies. The guilt phase is and over. And then we have, I believe, three statements from one more family before the next group will have to be brought in. So we're in towards mm -hmm. the end of group three this with is four a more statements. Statement from a young woman who was holding the banner with the grannies. And she marked down that the crime made her feel sad, mad, scared, and then also wrote in valuable. Asked if you were the judge, what would you do to the offender? She checked, send them to prison, 
and then her own idea of make the offender go through the physical and emotional pain I went through. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not how that works. There are four groups of impact statements. We are almost done with the third group of impact statements. Invaluable is so sad. And I can imagine that you've got so many were killed in the group of dancing grannies who are, who are older and feeling like they didn't, matter i can understand when you've lost so many in your group feeling like you your life just doesn't matter when somebody plows through it with a car i can absolutely understand i don't know what there was bring about i loved the granny sweater we turned we turned the lights to blue and they're just gonna stay that way even if there's fuckery we're just keeping we're just keeping them blue i don't know what they're talking about probably scheduling Thank you. My name is Taylor Kulik. Oh, he will give Standing a statement. Standing next to me is my oldest son, Robert. I am the oldest daughter of my mother, Jane Kulik, and it is on her behalf that I will be making a statement today as she's unable to speak for herself. November 21st, 2021, the day my life was forever changed. The day my mom was murdered. It's still hard to believe that my mom was killed while marching in a Christmas parade. I will never forget that day. When I received the phone call stating that my mom had been hit, I rushed to the hospital to find her. Within minutes of arriving at Waukesha Memorial, people of all ages flooded into the ER, many injured, Many searching for their family members, just like we were. It was complete chaos. After three hours spent searching and waiting, I can't imagine. Finally, a nurse came and asked us to sit down. My heart sank. I listened as they told us how my mom was unconscious when she was loaded into the ambulance, that they tried to save her but the damage was too severe for her to fight. She was dead upon arrival. She didn't even make it to the hospital. It hit me like a ton of bricks. My mom was just murdered. She was dead. How could I not? I did not sleep at all that night. All I did was cry. I sobbed for the loss of my mother. I bawled for the pain of my children losing their grandmother. And I wept for the rest of my family as we had all just lost an absolute gem. Next picture, please. <clears throat> I still Share cry. The pictures. Even as we approach one year without her, this year of all the firsts without my mom has been difficult to say the least. Every holiday, birthday and monumental life moment each of those moments another reminder that she's not here yeah. she was known for giving cards on every occasion and she showed up to everything she was invited to she was always present because she genuinely cared you could tell by the way her smile lit up the room or how contagious her laughter was her presence alone was just a sense of comfort a feeling of home. She was supportive, encouraging, and just so laid back that you couldn't help but get along with her. These are just some of the reasons we all love and miss her so much. Next picture, please. Her name was Jane, Jane Kulik. Her sister called her pain, so she was anti-pain to my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and known only as grandma to my kids. That's funny. But for me, and her name was mom. Mom and I were super tight. I could talk to her about anything in the world. We used to text each other almost every day. Talk on the phone almost <clears throat> at least once a week. 
and go out to lunch, just her and I, every other week. Every day, I'm missing those text messages. I miss hearing her voice on the phone and receiving her adorable voicemails or seeing her face light up when I unexpectedly pop up at the house. To simply say I miss my mom is a dramatic understatement of my true feelings. I'm devastated, a bit lost, and I can't fully describe how it feels other than a piece of me is missing. My smile is not so bright. I don't laugh the same anymore because I'm just not the same. I have never experienced such a painful level of sadness for so many consecutive days. I have never felt this level of heartache for myself or for my kids. Even though we talk about it, I can only imagine how my kids have felt this past year. Not only are they coping with the loss of their own grandmother, but also they've had to watch me, their mom, grieve my mom. My oldest son is dreading his upcoming birthday, just like we all did this year, as it's his first in 15 years without her. My mom always said they had a special bond, and they really did. She had a unique bond with each of her grandkids, as she did with each of us. My other son, Darius, was worried that he would forget his grandma's voice. And my daughter, Kylie, is finally able to talk about her grandma without tearing up. Each of my kids had a super close relationship with their grandma, and they're all missing her deeply. We were all so close, from family game nights, that barbecues, do this Sunday drives, to family vacations and beyond. We incredible. really did a lot together. We've tried to continue all these things without her, but they're different now. As the kids say, it's just not right without grandma. Some things will never be the same without her. Everywhere we go, there seems to be exactly one empty chair that she should be seated in. A perfect amount of empty space in a family photo where she should be standing. Or a little moment of silence where she should be laughing or adding to the conversation. Empty space. That's what it feels like. Empty, broken, shattered. Our family has an empty space where one of our members belong. An irreplaceable person was taken away from us abruptly. A member of our family unexpectedly gone. The rest of us left with a broken heart, shattered by the murder of an incredible person, left with an empty space that only she could fill. You can go to the next one, please. At this time, I would like to address my mother's murderer. Whatever your name is, I don't care. You ran over my mom like she was mere roadkill. The only reason you hit the brakes that day was to get her off the hood of your car. You targeted her, you targeted her with your vehicle and you hit her on purpose. You don't deserve to be here. You do not deserve forgiveness. You somehow still get to talk to your mom but mine is gone forever because you killed her. It's astonishing to me that any person could have absolutely zero regard for their fellow human being. Since you call yourself a man of God, then you know that the only punishment you are deserving of is death six times over. And I can't wait for the day that I hear you're dead in prison. Thank you, I appreciate your time. Okay. Her standing there trying to comfort her son, and the reason they shifted the camera is because her son was a minor, but her standing there trying to comfort her son and talk about losing her mom and staying strong to get all of that out and say what she wanted to say in the moment that she has to say it. My name is Alicia Kulik, and I am the youngest daughter of Jane Kulik. 
I've tried to figure out where to start, and there really isn't anywhere specific to start off with. And because she's a minor, they're not going to show her. I can't put all of my emotions oh, onto it. She's the youngest daughter. Many pieces oh, of paper, not a minor. They're just not enough. At least in my mind. This I've waited for this day, of the woman who both just anxiously, yet ready to share my piece on the matter. I'm here. Up, I'm here speaking upon behalf of my mother and the rest of my family and my twin brother standing right next to me. I've been to most of the trial that I could make it to as it is my first year in college and I, my mom would want me to put my schooling first. Ugh. I have many emotions on this subject, but without a doubt, the most, ex um, the most expense extensive emotion I feel is grief. At the time of this tragedy, I was 17 years old and I was starting my senior year of high school, which most people would think should be your best time of school. But for me, it was anything but that. I was starting my college journey, at least trying to. My mom managed to take my brother and I on at least two college tours before she had passed. It was my last prom, my 18th birthday, and of course graduating, all of which I did not enjoy. Not one of them. The joy of these things were stripped away from me. Quickly on November, tours, November 21st of 2021, I could tell you every last detail about that day, up to the clothes I was wearing. I could tell you what show I was watching, as I am thankful that I was sick that day and couldn't be at the parade to see what many got to see, unfortunately. I was bummed at first because I was sick that day and I couldn't see my mom march in her first ever parade. She was really excited. Granted, she's marched in parades before, alongside my brother and I, through WPRF, but this time, the light was supposed to shine on just her. <laughs> um, I don't even think, I don't think that it had been two hours since she left, that my dad got a phone call from someone my mom had been marching with, stating that she had been hit by a car. At first, I thought my dad was just upset about something over work, because that's kind of common. <laughs> um, or what my mind went to was that maybe the after parade traffic was pretty bad, and somebody just, she collided with another car, not a car to person. <sighs> I remember the first thing I did is my dad told us all to run and get our shoes, and before anybody got into the car, I called my best friend. And I told her that my mom had been hit, and I didn't know the extent to which, how bad the situation was, and I would fill her in whenever I could. Ugh. On the way to the hospital was when reality quickly set in, and oh, how I wish I was right. I wish that it was just this, I just wish that it was a car-on-car -car crash, not a car, not an SUV to person. As we got closer to the hospital, the drasticity of this incident was quickly revealed. Ambulances were surrounding the hospital, and the waiting room was a triage. I will never forget the things I saw that day. I will never forget the chaos of parents searching for their children, demanding answers as we were for my mom. Oh, the hospital staff my dad rushed just into the back. He had too. this sweatshirt on that had an ambulance symbol on it that he just thrifted and used it to his advantage. I specifically remember seeing the extreme dancers with gashes in their head and cuts all over their body and blood all over their clothes. In one direction, I saw one girl, probably no older than 10, seizing in her wheelchair and the mother just screaming, not knowing what to do for her precious child. In the other end, I saw a girl that was on a blanket on the floor she was screaming every time she was touched. And when we couldn't find out any information about where my mom was, I quickly knew, I quick, quickly my brain knew before my heart did the outcome. I never thanked my dad for this, but I appreciated the, optis, the optimism and the composure he kept during the longest waiting period of my life. He was optimistic, saying that God would make everything okay.
And we'd even joke around a little bit about my, about my mom while she was, well, while she was dead. When a doctor finally approached us, I was in the bathroom. I had to take some time away from my family as I didn't want them to see I was upset. My older sister, she pulled me out and she told me that they finally had some information. And when they told us, when they brought us back to the room and told us to sit down, you just know. Yeah. You just know. Yeah. And to prepare myself for what I was about to hear. Hearing that my mom had deathly injuries in her head and her lungs and all the rest of her organs, and she was deceased. That is the words that he used. He was de she was deceased. That is something that I will never be able to unhear, along with what I saw in the triage of that hospital waiting room that day. Oftentimes when I hear sirens, I'm scared. I'm scared that another family has to go through what I went through, what my family went through. And it's terrifying that in the world we live in, something like that can happen in the blink of an eye. We were driven home by a squad that car that day, considering none of us were in good condition to drive. And I'll yeah. never forget all the phone calls I had to make to tell our loved ones that my mom was dead. But she didn't get the chance. She did not get a say in the matter. I remember calling my best friend, all of my best friends, <laughs> and they stayed with me till three in the morning, and my boyfriend, they all did. And the next day, I didn't even want to get out of bed. I couldn't. I don't, I, I still spend every day just waiting for this nightmare to end. As I think that second day, it still hasn't fully processed yet that my mom was no longer with us. <laughs> I never would wish on my worst enemy to have the burden to share such horrible news that nobody ever prepares you for. After all is said and done, I couldn't get out of bed for a few days, nor did I have much of an appetite. The next few days consisted of me trying to put together this new life, all of which still doesn't, still doesn't sink in sometimes. But other days, believe me, it does. Even though I've received so much love and support from the community, my friends, and my family, I've never felt so alone. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever be capable of feeling this much pain in my life. But here I am. I'm watching my siblings, and my nephews and niece, and my cousins and my aunt, and all the rest of my family going through this. It's just terrible. <sighs> Up to today, I've experienced every holiday officially, besides my oldest nephew's birthday, without my mom. And they've all sucked, every last one of them. I slept through most of Thanksgiving. Christmas was probably the most depressing of all. It's supposed to be a time of cheer and joy, but how is it supposed to feel any of these things with my mom being dead? It was her favorite time of year, which made it even harder to enjoy. Every time we went to church, the song Silent Night came on, and she'd always cry. And now I do the same. I also had my 18th birthday, two months after she was murdered. If it wasn't for my sister planning an amazing party for both my brother and I, I don't think I would have gotten out of bed that day. Yeah. She was the woman that brought me into this world, and it didn't feel right celebrating without her. I had my senior prom without her, and she didn't get the chance to tell me how beautiful I looked, and then embarrassed me with a bunch of pictures. I had to walk the stage at my high school graduation without my number one supporter cheering me on in the crowd. I received scholarships, and my mom didn't get to tell me how proud of me she was. I spent most of my senior year in the guidance counselor's office catching up on all the missing work that I had, simply because I couldn't focus in class or at home, because I was too sad. There was a classmate in my school 
that truly understood what I was going through besides my friend and family. <laughs> the day after the parade incident happened, she called me and she asked if I was okay because she, her family had experienced what I had. Her little sister was part of the dance team and she was there and saw her sister get hit by this SUV. <laughs> and as bad as it seems to say, I was glad in that moment that I had somebody that could relate to my situation that wasn't family. I felt for once that I had somebody that I could bond with that truly understood the emotions that I was feeling. I'm so glad that she didn't get to experience the extent of what I did and having to lose a loved one from the moment, but she came close. I love you guys. Quite often, I also think about my future as I think about my past memories with my mom. And although I wish I could say present memories, I don't have any. I think about how my mom won't be at my wedding and I'm gonna save a seat for her, but she won't be there and she won't get to see me say my vows or get married to the love of my life. And she won't ever get to see my future kids and they won't know what it's like to have a grandma that spoils them and how I have to be uh, how I have to be the one with the burden to tell them of what happened to their grandmother and why they don't have one I won't ever get to ask my mom for parenting advice as a first time mom you Daryl Brooks took these experiences away from both me and my brother, as he will be in the same position as I am. And I wish I could say that I don't carry anger in my heart, but that's, that's just okay. simply not true. I'm angry that all this could have been prevented if and you had you just stopped. I think about how my mom saw what was coming, and she knew that there was absolutely nothing she could have done about it. I'm angry. Because as if my mom flying over the roof of your car wasn't good enough for you, you slammed on your brakes to get her off and continue to run her over. She wouldn't even have had a fighting chance because of you. I'm angry that all of us had to relive this trauma as you sat in that chair for weeks, not giving a single crap about any of these people. Facts. I've watched as you mocked yes. the Bible and people's religion and the fake tears that you put on. Read him, read him. I've watched as you gave your closing statement about asking the jury to do what they think is right when you couldn't have just done that yourself in the first place. I've waited for you to have a reason as to why you did all this so that maybe somehow, somehow I could get the slightest bit of closure, but I never will. A lot of people have asked me how I feel about the verdict. I feel happy that he was found guilty on all counts. Well, the jury found him guilty on all counts. But you know, it doesn't do crap for me because that won't change Sorry. what happened to my mom. She will not be coming home ever again. Yeah. She will not ever make me another dinner she will not ever attend my wedding and I'll never get to hear her voice or hug her again. So really, it changes nothing for me. <laughs> the only thing that it gives me at this time that I can say is that I know our justice system has persevered and that they have done my mom right. And I thank you all for that. As long with all the other victims. My life will never be the same because of you, Daryl Brooks. I have not enjoyed a single day fully since my mom has died. I'm depressed. A lot of the time, I don't watch certain shows anymore because it reminds me of my mom. I don't do certain things because it just hurts too much. I spent most of my summer inside instead of enjoying the sun and the warmth that we only get for a short period of time here in Wisconsin. I spent it inside being sad. You don't know what it's like 
I had to be in that waiting room and my oldest nephew was texting me and asking me what is wrong and where his grandma was. And I couldn't lie to him. I had to say something. I was there when we had to break the news to my nephews and my niece that their grandma was not coming home. And I saw the tears run down their young, innocent faces and broke them. My nephew Darius, he's always been into video games. <laughs> but recently, all he does is stay in his room on the video games. And he doesn't really come out much anymore. And I can't help but think that's because of this incident. That he can't see my mom smile. That she was taking from all of us way too young. <laughs> My mom was the glue that kept this family together, and without her, we've been falling apart. We've been struggling to stick together, because nothing's the same. And I blame you for that. Well, Every piece of it. He did it. Thank you. Thank you. I know the whole every just everyone just everyone and for those of you that have lost your parents I see so many of you in the chat saying I feel you it is losing a parent in any way is horrific knowing what he did to her mother is just on another level Greg Houston this is my wife Carrie family members of Jane Kulik the definition of an angel is a person of exemplary conduct or virtue. They are tasked to keep the in all ways. Jane Kulik had many roles and relationships in her life, all of them purposeful and endearing. The impact in her many lifelong friendships were far reaching and will forever be felt. Jane had spent 52 years on this earth before she was ripped away from us by you. On my daughter's birthday, which would have been a happy day. Not well. She Caitlin. was simply enjoying and celebrating the start of the season she loved best by handing out candy with her co workers during the Christmas parade. That morning she went to church. She called her niece to wish her a happy birthday, planning to call her later in the day and spend time talking and relaxing with her family before getting ready to go for a pre-parade lunch and Packer game with the last people who would see her alive. Cause that's what you do. Jane considered those close to her as family. <clears throat> she had several families and roles within them. Some of them were daughter, sister, mother, wife, grandmother, aunt, and best friend. If you had gotten to know Jane, you would have known how seriously she took those roles and relationships. Her people were everything, and her biggest blessings and motivators were her children, Taylor, Jacob, and Alicia, husband John, her grandchildren, Robert, Darius, and Kylie. She was happiest when surrounded by all of them, planning trips, hearing about daily growing glows, having game night, and even just falling asleep while enjoying a movie together. The Benz Houston family was honored and blessed to spend 42 of those 52 years with Jane as our family. <coughs> there are too many memories to list that include her. Memories that were both big and little life events. That's life. We would often hear stories of how her and her coworkers joked about her clumsiness, would be dressing up for the holidays, looked forward to and celebrate each other's milestones, or just plan to hang out. She was there for everything and for everyone. If she could not be there in person, 
She made up for it through weekly phone calls that would have you laughing yourself silly and creating a plan much like the one we had made the night before to go shopping, make cookies, just a fun holiday celebration. <clears throat> she was always willing and happy to help out, positive, never judgmental. Spreading grace and patience to all she encountered. She loved, honored, and held dear her people and their places in her life. Our places in her life were forced to change instantly on November 21st, 2021. Our places in her life became now the people that were responsible for helping to keep her family together and keep them strong, help her children and her grandchildren make it through everything. You changed our place in her life. You made it forefront and you made us helpless because we don't feel that we could do those things the way she could have. We feel inadequate and broken because of you. The evening of November 21st, 2021, everything changed. That evening, Alicia sent me a message saying, Auntie, Mom's been hit and we don't know where she is or where they took her. I mean, I, the we immediately sounds... drove out there to find her and helped make several phone calls to area hospitals to find her. After several hours of not having any answers, we finally decided to go sit in the lot of Waukesha Memorial where her children and husband were trying to find out information and were under a lockdown. We couldn't even go hug them. After hours of not receiving confirmation, Taylor finally sent the hardest message I have ever had to read. She's dead. She's dead. My daughter collapsed to the ground and I turned to my husband and begged and cried for him to bring her back. I wanted her back. To tell you I know how we all moved and survived after that would be a lie. In the hours, days, and now a year following that night, we have all talked in the quiet hours when heartache, loneliness, nightmares, and anger set in about how much we miss her. For validation of our feelings and questioning of those same feelings, things we shouldn't have had to question. The question asked most by us, is if Jane would have granted you grace. I know my answer. I know that she was the type of person that would have never saying anything bad about anyone. She's like, but I'm going to take us, a minute. It's just not that simple, yep. sir. I'm going to take a minute. You take this your is minute. what we do know, though, is Jane's collective whole. We will and never could ever forget her. We mourn the fact that she missed her twin senior year and graduation. We mourn the loss of her presence every day and especially at family functions. We miss the long weekly phone calls on Wednesdays and Fridays, reminiscing about old times, people we miss in just our daily lives. We miss her hugs, the smell of her hair, her trying to hold in a laugh when we would make faces at an inappropriate time. And as we say, we miss the 47 faces of Jane, much of which could be seen in the pictures taken just hours before her death. We are angry she will never be the mother of the bride or have the mother-son dance at her children's weddings. We are angry she will never get to make stronger bonds with the newest members of our family or hold the grandchildren and family yet to be born to her children or even ours. We are saddened that you feel you are suffering because your life has changed. For us, it changed the night you ripped her away from us and drove by with her body on top and slowed down and ran her over. You say you have a clear conscience. How can you suffer if you have a clear conscience? 
at least you will always still be able to make the phone calls, write the letters, and visit with your people. We simply cannot, sir. Above all else, we are angry that Jane became known by people more because of the day she died and the way she died than because of who she was. Until today. Taking all of that into consideration, Until we today. ask that you please hand down the maximum sentence for each conviction that you possibly could. The definition of an angel is a person of exemplary conduct and virtue. They are tasked with keeping their people safe, keeping them cherished, and keeping them loved. Those are all the things she did. So by that definition alone, Jane was an angel on earth. Thank you. Thank you. And that is why Three, they do victim impact statements. Break and have you set up for the fourth. A ten minute break is ideal, Your Honor. My face can literally not handle anymore. My face is broken. I cannot. I cannot. My face. My face is broken. So they are taking a ten minute break. All of you in the chat who are sharing your own uh, journeys and walks with grief. It. I mean, it's. Here's the thing about grief for me. Just if I might rant for a moment about grief. Oh. Because I'm just having too many feelings. And I would like to take a moment to not have so many feelings. I know. I need to go stick my face in the freezer. Like my entire face. Like my entire face needs to go in the freezer. Um, here's the thing. Is that we we all go through it. And we don't talk about it nearly enough. Because it's so hard. And it's so unpredictable. And it's so different for everyone. And we just don't talk about grief enough. And we don't share our grief with others enough. Because a lot of us don't want to burden anyone else with our grief. So we're just like... Oh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. It's horrible. Grief is horrible. And we all walk through it differently and in different ways. But we all walk through it because we're humans. We all have to walk through grief. And we truly don't talk about it enough. And we don't know how to deal with it when others express it. And we just don't. Um, but we can do that today. And we can we can share in that as humans and and be a witness to the grief that these families are going through and knowing that we've all, that we've all been there in different ways. Um, though I have lost people to murder. I have sat with families that have lost people to murder. It's, it's all, it's just very, very, very real. Um, so I'm not going to spill all my own grief on you. We're going to get to some of the questions, but allowing, um, Allowing for the space for it in court is so needed. And if it is ever, unfortunately, in your life that you are in a place where you have to um, give an impact statement, if you can do, and if you can't write it, share with the court, share with the judge what you've been through and what you felt. Tell them. Tell them. You don't have to tell the defendant, but you do need to tell the court. Tell them if you can. And that's one of the things with the one of the things with being able to write letters to the court is you can um you can just do it so um wait i found my i found my book of lawyer jokes hold on hold on i did i found my book of lawyer jokes Ugh. i talked about this on a um I talked about this on a live stream with the members 175 years ago. That's an accurate, that's accurate. 175 years. I'm trying to put the tears back in my face with a fan. I'm hope I'm just hoping it works. Put, put them back in my face to the lawner that sent me these fans. They're fucking fabulous. And I love them. Thank you. I feel like I get to unleash my inner Peter Mon. It can't, it can't go that way. It's got, uh, it's got to go this way. Damn it. Ugh. Emily, you should cover more criminal cases. Also me, no. Also me, no. So this came up on a members-only live stream ages and ages and ages ago, and I was looking for it after we moved here, and I was like, I can't find my book. 
I was cleaning out my office this weekend because it's how I gained control of my life because ADHD and I was not ready to record the podcast and I needed my space to be organized before this week because I knew I knew exactly what this was going to be today. And um and I knew I just needed to ooh, needed to have my space set cuz normally well most cases I have dealt with have not had as many victim impact statements. I knew it was going to be a very long day. So with that um with that I have found my book I have, it's been missing since we moved. And now I have found my book, <laughs> Matt Pond. Finally, how many years did it take? I, I think I mentioned this on a members only live stream in 2020. <laughs> so I think we're on a 10 minute, 10 minute uh, break. So we're going to take a minute. <sighs> we're going to take a minute. These are innocent, your honor. And they are um, a book of lawyer cartoons by New Yorker cartoonist, Danny Shanahan. So we're just, whew, we're going to go with a lawyer joke. And then we're going to go to some super chats and answer some questions. Um, this is a whole bunch of dude lawyers sitting around saying, I know what Ali McBeal would do. Ali McBeal had a large influence on the, uh, the court system, especially in the manners of dress, especially in the manners of dress. Let's see what the end next page said. It said, um, <laughs> this is gentleman at a bar that looks like an old Western saloon with the line. I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die after that law school was pretty much a given. Cause, cause of course, oh wait, oh wait. Um, this is this is witches making a witch's brew here. We can see that very well. That says, and just to be on the safe side, tongue of an attorney. <laughs> Oh my, the lawyer jokes. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Um, this one is a lawyer looking at his client saying, hell, let's exhaust our illegal options too. <laughs> Not just our legal options. Our Let's exhaust our illegal options. I mean, it sounds like that's what Tom Girardi was doing. Wait until tomorrow... Wait until tomorrow's podcast with all of the Girardi lawyer fuckery. It's 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 going to feel like fuckery on a different level after this. All right. Let's get through some of our... Let's get through some of ours. I also have... Um, lawyers get such a bad rap. I mean, A, they can handle it, and B, some of them deserve it. So I also have... Hold on. <laughs> so when I was traveling... Um... Somebody said, remember when Ally McBeal fell through the toilet seat? I remember, and I also can't relate because I've never been that small. So I was like, that could happen to somebody. And then I had kids and I was like, oh shit, they could actually fall through. Um, but I don't remember being that small of a human. I, the LAX Delta Sky Club had Laffy Taffy and I could not help myself. So I brought home a whole bunch of Laffy Taffy. Yes, I'm an adult. I'm an adult and I can just buy my own candy, but somehow... Somehow it's better when you get it at the airport lounge. It just is. I think it doesn't have calories. That's why. Um, let's see. What three letters hold a lot of data? <laughs> Chat, do you want to guess? What three letters hold a lot of data? Chat, I'm going to give you a minute and let you guess. And then we'll do the next one. Um, we're going to let you, we're going to let you guess. We're going to see if anybody gets it. Did you shake the Laffy Taffy? I mean, I did. Who said cherry Laffy Taffy? Look, look, look. Who got it? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna scroll up because a ton of answers came in at once. What three letters hold a lot of data? Ram is a good guess, but no. DNA is an excellent guess, but no. IRS is an excellent guess, but no. FBI is an excellent guess, but no. I mean, CIA would be an excellent guess, but no. Um, all of you who said USB, I would if look when I was a when I taught in law school, I would bring a bowl of candy and throw it at kids who got the right answers, but I was still much closer in time to being a water polo player. So people would literally, literally duck, like literally duck. So all of you who guessed USB are correct. It is USB. All right, we need to do another one as a chat. We're doing this together. Okay. Um, what button can't you unbutton? I'm going to give you a minute to answer that. We'll do a few more Laffy Taffy jokes and then we're going to questions because we all just need a minute. We all just need a minute. We all just need a minute. <laughs> I like FYI as an answer. DNA is a good answer. Y'all smart chat. DNA is a great answer. DNA is a great answer. I also liked CIA. I liked all of them, but USB. 
All of you, belly button, belly button, belly button. Ooh, Benjamin button. Wrong answers only. I like Benjamin button, but all of you said belly button. <laughs> yep. Oh, panic button. <laughs> Darlene, yes, the panic button. That's where we're all at today. Today, we're all at panic button. Today, we're all at panic button. And the delete button. I love that too. I love the delete button as an option. We love that. We love delete button. It's you can't unboop the floof. Did y'all see the, um, there is a TikTok going around. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. We all need a TikTok for a moment with the, because it's me. Um, we're going to go to TikTok for a moment. Um, I should probably trigger warning this TikTok, but maybe I won't. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, I, I bet I can send it to myself. Hold on. Let me text a link to myself. We're going to make this happen before the court comes back. Now it's a race against time, folks. It's a race against time. Can Emily find the TikTok that she's obsessed with fast enough to get this on screen before the court comes in and still not get copy claimed? All of the things are possible. All things are possible. It is a race against the clock. Um, where in the world is this TikTok? Why do I like so many TikToks? I should just save the ones that I want to show to my family. I should just save them instead of just liking them because when I like them, they get buried with all the other things I like. Where is it? All right, hold on. I can't have liked that. Why am I spending so much time on freaking TikTok, Emily? Girl, we need to get it together. But this one's actually really, really funny. No, not the security guard dancing with the Tennessee dance team. Where is it? How long is it? Why am I still scrolling? Because my brain has stopped and I can't. Okay. It's got to be after these. It's got to be after these. Where did it go? I saved this TikTok for a reason oh there it is okay let me ah let me find the link to it if i text myself the link i should be able to pull it up all right i can copy the link i can sh put the link in here gosh i love technology sometimes okay we're looking at this together y'all we're going to we're going to tiktok because look it's me it's me i have a story about this tiktok i shared this with my family it's one of my favorite things ever let me make sure the volume's on y'all look here we go this is this is accurate. This is all accurate. And um, I've had this experience. Let's see if I can make this. Can I make this screen bigger? How do you use TikTok on a computer even? Oh, there we go. All right. Um, this is one of my favorites. Y'all, this is me. I'm just, I'm letting you know. The woman in this video is me. Because I have these, these four-legged things at my house. Darn it. I just want to push play. I don't know what the hell that is. Is it a lynx? What is that? I'll tell you exactly what that is. Me, me, me. I saw one of these in my yard and I was like, what is that? I don't know what it is. I don't know I what don't it know is. What the that is. Is it a lynx? What is that? I'll tell you exactly what that is. That is the pint sized version of fuck around and find out. Even with that knowledge, I just know there is a white lady that will see that tail wagon and think to herself, if not friend, why friend Me, shake? that's me. And then we'll proceed to try to go boop the snoot of Mittens the murder kitty and wind up as a hashtag on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. Is it a lynx? What is that? If I'm going to end exactly up as a hashtag on Twitter that's not hashtag Wood Daddy Stacks, I, I, I want it to be because of Mittens the murder kitty. It is. It's a danger floof. Somebody else called it a karate kitty. <laughs> It's a danger floof. Um, Law and Lumber, my parents in Arizona. Um, what did he say? We had these all over. Stay away. Look, man. It, when I first moved here, I'm like, what is that out in the yard? My husband's like, what is that out in the yard? And we're like, we don't even know. We're watching this one more time as the court comes back in. Your Honor, we need we need mittens of the murder kitty. Hold on. That's the pint-sized version of fuck around and find out. Even with that knowledge, I just know there is a white lady that will see that Wait, tail we are wagon back on and the think to herself, then. if not for in, why for in shape? And then we'll proceed to try to go boop the snoot. Boop the snoot. Just the a little bit kitty more and methodical about getting folks up here. So we need admittance to the murder kitty. We needed a joke be, for a minute. Um, for victims AA and BB. And Would I try to boop the snoot of a bobcat? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Did I think they looked cute? Yes. Also, never saw one in California where I lived because I lived by the beach. And all I saw were houses and pigeons and shit. Um, but Mittens, the murder kitty, Good had afternoon. me dying. My name is Leanne Hollingsworth, the mother of two victims. I want to start by thanking everyone oh, involved mama. in this case. By bringing justice. For We're here victims. with you. 
I want to thank all of the officers, first responders that helped us that day, especially the amazing Waukesha County Sheriff who was willing to transport me and my daughter to the hospital so quickly. I also went danger If it wasn't for you, I'm not sure she'd be here today. Thank you to all of the staff at Children's Hospital for the amazing care for my daughter. Eating one and thank these. you to the Waukesha community. Thank you to the Good Samaritans who stayed with my daughter until I arrived, covered her with blankets to keep her warm, tried to comfort her. To all of you, I'm forever grateful. November 21st, 2021 is a day that will forever be etched in our minds and hearts as one of the worst days of our lives. On this day, you, Daryl Brooks, made the conscious decision to drive through the Waukesha Christmas Parade and destroy the sense of security and safety of my family and I'm thousands of others. I'm guessing her kids are with her my and that's two daughters why they're not going to show her. Most, dancing in the parade with their teammates when you destroyed that fun. My oldest daughter watched as her teammates went flying through the air, one of which was her sister. She had to make the frantic call to me to tell me that her sister was injured. Not only that, but because yeah, you, Daryl Brooks, the continued team. driving and didn't stop, no one knew if the danger was gone or if they were still at risk. I remember the terrified phone call from a couple of blocks away telling me to get inside the nearest building to stay safe. As a mother, I knew in that moment I couldn't leave my kids alone, so I had to make the choice to risk my own safety, run all the way down Main Street to get to them. I myself had to see the carnage of what you, Daryl Brooks, did to so many people. Those images will never leave me and will haunt me for the rest of my life. That view can only be described as that of a war scene, one which you knowingly caused. So we made our way down Main Street. I had no idea what to expect when I found my younger daughter. Mr. Brooks, you mentioned your young daughter during the trial. I want you to picture your daughter right now, your eight-year-old daughter. And I want you to imagine the fear and anger that you'd feel if a monster drove over your daughter and many others. I want you to picture finding your own daughter when I describe what I found. When I finally found our group, I had to run from person to person, lying on the ground to find my daughter. And when I finally did, she was unresponsive, couldn't open her eyes, was missing her white Christmas hat and headband and her shoe. Her sock was shredded with road rash on her foot. Her left leg was bent horribly in a way a leg shouldn't bend. Her head was immediately swelling in addition to the road rash across her face and the rest of her body and the blood coming from her mouth. It was over the next few days we learned of the extent of all of her injuries. Severe bleeding of the brain, which required emergency surgery. Severe traumatic brain injury. Multiple skull fractures, no which required emergency surgery to repair. A severely broken femur, which required two surgeries to repair. A pelvic bone fracture. And I'm sure many others that I missed in the hundreds of pages of reports from her injuries and weeks-long hospital stay. While my husband and I stayed in the hospital with our youngest daughter, unsure of whether she would live to see the next day, my family stepped up to take care of our older daughter and help her try to feel safe after the trauma that you had just inflicted. I cannot begin to expect a narcissist like you to understand what it's like to sit in the ICU staring at your daughter with tubes and wires from every part of her body trying to keep her alive, watching every monitor and test result hoping that things are going the right direction, not knowing if your daughter is going to wake up the same bright bubbly girl she was before a monster plowed through at her Christmas parade. When she did wake up, I the feel real her struggle anger, began. Man. I can, I can Our feel then nine-year-old daughter had anger. to learn to eat, talk, move, and walk again. She had to use a wheelchair and walker for months, even as she returned to school. Instead of playing in the snow with her friends at recess, she sat in a wheelchair. She couldn't dance. She couldn't run around playing with her friends. Even today, she deals with the effects of this day. Her leg still hurts. She struggles with the neurological effects of her injuries, is on seizure medication, and worries about every little symptom for fear it is something bigger related to her injuries. Oh, this is going to break Judge Darrow, too. You can see it on her face. Your own mother and grandmother, Daryl Brooks, have claimed your supposed mental health issues are to blame, but you, Daryl Brooks, were found to be completely competent and fully aware of exactly what you were doing. She's going to tell him. All you had to do was hit the brakes instead of the gas pedal. Tell him. Yet, like the narcissist you are, you claimed you honked to the horn, but in your eyes, somehow it was their fault. They didn't get out of the way. You were so fully aware of he your wrongfulness of your actions that you ran from the vehicle, tried to change your appearance, and lied in an attempt to get away from the scene. Yes. You knew exactly what you were doing. Yes. Daryl Brooks, you have destroyed our sense of safety and security in our own community. You are the reason my kids are afraid to cross the street. You are the reason my kids don't sleep at night. You are the reason we may never enjoy a parade again. You are the reason my daughters are afraid of the dark. Yes. You are the reason my daughters don't feel safe without their parents around. You are the reason we visit doctors constantly. And you are the reason their lives will never be the same again. 
You have taken something from them that cannot be regained, and for that, I hope you rot in hell. Yeah, she does. And she has every right to. The DA has his number. She's looking at him. The DA is looking at him, rolling his eyes. He is. He is what's scary in the dark to her kids. And what's scarier well, than what happens? Crane, November 21st, 2021, impacted me both physically and mentally because of you, Daryl Brooks. After the Christmas break incident that night, I had to try and find my sister. I was taken away from her to get to safety. I had to explain to my mom what happened while crying and trying to get to a safe spot. I got to finally find my family, but then getting taken away again from my mother and sister to get to safety. I had to try to stay calm in front of all of my cousins and family. I was not able to see my sister for over a week and a half, and I did not get to see my mom for several days. All of these things and many more were very hard for me. I was so worried, not just about my parents and my sister, but about all of my friends and family that were either at the parade or in it. After the parade, I was scared to go in my own house. I was even scared to be in a rumor house alone. It was very scary to do anything alone. I was scared of everything. I didn't sleep for the first night, even though you, Daryl Brooks, were arrested. I was still worried about that something might happen. I no longer felt safe. Not only did you impact me, but you also impacted my sister Mackenzie. She was severely injured with a brain injury and a broken femur. She was in the hospital for two weeks because of you. I didn't get to spend as much time as I normally would with my parents because they were at the hospital mm. with my sister. During the holidays and Thanksgiving, I should have been able to spend with my parents and sister, but I couldn't because of you. The in incident impacted me physically as well. I had a huge bruise on my back as well as the bruised bones in both of my ankles. He could see that them, night, but he won't turn around. The parade, all I could think about was my sister. I was so worried about her. I kept trying to find her. After running from person to person, she was the last person that I found. All I remember was seeing my teammates' terrified faces as they were on the sidewalk. As I was looking for my sister, I this saw four of the girl girls that were injured on the ground before I even found my sister. And when I found teammates. her, I was suddenly rushed into a store as I was still on the phone with my mom. As soon as I rushed into the store, my nana and uncle both came to get me when my mom went to the hospital with my sister. All I can remember is that I wasn't even scared for myself. I was mostly worried about my family and my teammates. It was almost three hours before we were allowed to leave the church we were on lockdown. I hadn't had any connection with my family for the whole time that I was in the church. There were a lot of people coming That's into scary. the church after I came in trying to all stay safe. It's hard to even think that you do not even care about anything that you did or anyone that you hurt. It's hard to know that all you care about is trying to make everyone feel unsafe and scared to do anything. The fact that most scared me and made me feel disgust when I heard your name or saw you was the fact that you didn't stop when you hit multiple people. You didn't stop when you saw or heard of yourself hitting people and the most horrific thing is that all you try to do is run away from your problems. Let this be a lesson to you, Daryl Brooks. Your crimes and stupidity is always going to come back to you, no matter how hard you try for it not to. I hope you know that you were such a horrible person that night and I hope you get what you deserve and I know that you will. He's still pulling antics in court. Dep Deputy Poker Face has done an incredible job here because my heart just hurts. This this is the group from the dance crew that was uh, teens and then younger younger preteens uh, and younger kids. Heartbreak heartbreaking. And what kills me out of is hearing Let them saying, "I was trying to call, saying, call my mom." I'm one of four siblings that were victims of Mr. Brooks. In fact, I am the oldest child, and with being the oldest, that comes with a unhealthy ambition to protect my family. But that night on Welcome November 21st, yep, I felt like that. I was unable to achieve that goal. My siblings, oh, fortunately, don't remember that night. It's not your fault. But unfortunately, I do. I remember everything from celebrating my sister's birthday beforehand to meeting her unconscious at the hospital. I can't help but feel guilty for what happened to my brother that night. Everything up to his open compound fracture and his shadowed humerus. Something deep inside me is still believes that it's my fault. He wasn't supposed to be there that night. He wasn't supposed to be walking in the parade, but he wanted to because his older sister was there. He was right next to me through the whole parade up to when we got struck. <coughs> I can't help but feel like some of my mental and physical injuries or some of his mental physical injuries are my fault. I still remember screaming his name while being carried into burlap and lace on Main Street. I would like to say I had hope, but with all the frustrated, confused, and what-if <coughs> statements and scenarios in my head, that hope eventually turned into doubt. 
That night, I realized the love I had for my family. I still have regrets and struggles, but so does my mom, dad, friends, and community. We all have regrets, but the struggles we faced are laying on your hands, Mr. Brooks. My uncle always told me to show kindness through times of trial. It's okay, but I am not able to give that to you. That's okay. Even through school, You're I've been to taught be that forgiveness is the moral way to forget, but I will never be able to forgive and forget. I mean, okay. how can a man not know the difference between good and evil, right and wrong, good and bad? Basic things you were taught in kindergarten. Brooks, your behavior before and during this trial, your ignorance and arrogance to the victims of your crime is so disrespectful and just unbelievable. Fun fact, Facts. you, Mr. Brooks, brought my mom to testify on your behalf. How could you believe that was the civil thing to do, knowing that she had four kids injured and hit by your SUV? Heartbreaking that he You knew their that mother. this would affect her and my family emotionally and physically. How could you be so stupid, egotistical, and delusional? You bring up mental illness, but what I find unacceptable is the fact that you had the choice, but you kept going. She's, I will she's always got have the simple number. question of why. But that might never be answered. My sisters had a passion for dance. My brother played baseball and soccer. I am a dancer and I will always be a dancer, but because of your actions, it will never feel the same. I know my siblings and I have accepted the fact that we might never be able to regain our passions and dreams. We know that we now have lifelong challenges, but we also have people <clears throat> that support us and help us regain our hope and goals that we lost that night. Overall, I want people to remember that this is not about the parade, this is about the man. The depression, anger, sorrow, all these negative feelings shouldn't be directed towards the parade, instead directed towards the man. This is not the parade's fault, and I think we need to come together as a community and realize that. With all the media and all the press, reaching out to my family in the past year has brought anxiety and stress. But I want sure. that, oh, I want to thank my family, friends, and community one more time for supporting my family through these trying times and also giving me the confidence to stand here and say I want to punch this man in the face. Your Honor, I need Daryl Brooks to serve the time he deserves You're without laughing. parole. You're laughing? I need him to be locked up for You're life, laughing. and that is my statement. She's telling you exactly how she feels, and her feelings are echoed. Thank you. Daryl Brooks called their mother to testify. He called the mother of those four as a witness. All four kids were hurt, including the open compound Mr. fracture from the younger son. I am son. back. I am back. Do I have to say more? My daughter pretty much clarified. Your daughter read it. Why it. the hell did you bring me up to the stand? <clears throat> Pardon Good for my you. Language, Judge. No, you let it go. Absolutely boggles my mind. Yep. Absolutely boggles my mind. The audacity. Once, twice, three, four, five times. They brought my children's names up. They addressed concerns. I just, your arrogance and your behavior is just pathetic. On that behalf, though. I am here on behalf of not one, not two, not three, but four children. I'm not gonna testify and tell you all the particulars and injuries of what happened to my children. You testified to them. We saw that on the stand. We did. I'm not gonna tell you about the stress of how as parents we had to suffer and continue to suffer day after day, taking our kids to appointments, having a healthy mind and soul. But you know what? We're doing a darn good job. I say this with a heavy heart. I have my kids here. I have my kids here. Grayson, as Charlotte says, had open compound fracture. We know how open compound fracture happens, Mr. Brooks. You could have stopped. You saw the darn exhibit 
We, you saw you that exhibit swear. of my daughter. We hear it. Let it out. It's fine. The you judge saw her. The judge is swearing in her head, too. And your expression is unacceptable. Your behavior has been unacceptable. Emotionally, as a mother, you have to go one way or another. You have to, let me just start off by saying, as Charlotte knows, there were two calls that came to me that night and I couldn't, I couldn't put everything together. I was just like, what is going on? That third call. I can't imagine. My what? mindset changed. What? What? I what? couldn't cry. I couldn't get mad. I couldn't, I had to fight for my children. Yeah. Their father and I had to push forward. Do we have time to worry about our own feelings? Oh boy. <laughs> Not when your kids are in the hospital, you don't. We still are working through that. Yep. I am working through that. But you know what? I won't show them weakness. They are on a positive road, mentally and physically. My son Grayson loves soccer, can kick that ball in any direction. And now he's still learning to walk and run in a consistent manner. Alice, as Charlotte mentioned, whose passion was dancing, has sorrow now. She hasn't, been, she hasn't made it back to dancing yet. Vivian, the youngest, as you saw in that exhibit as I spoke, is the life of the family, joking, living it up when you broke her tailbone and she was unconscious at Children's Hospital for extended time. You did that, Mr. Brooks. This is on you. But these kids will not be weak. No. Their family will not allow them to be weak. They are going to strive for success with what you put them through. And heal. Again, I, I want to limit any, like, injury, things of that nature, because you know what? They're striving. They're doing great. <laughs> And I can only hope that they continue in that manner in a positive nature. What I do want to thank is a few people. Jeff, who helped Charlotte that night. Um, both Officer Ryan with Waukesha. I'm using their first names. Officer Ryan, who did save Grayson's life. Officer Ryan from Pewaukee, who did drive um, Grayson to the hospital. The other fellow dance families who have slowly and surely advised me of their personal connections they had with my four kids that night. That I can't be thankful, or sorry, I can't, I'm gonna be forever grateful there for their love and compassion. For their grandparents, who had to watch our two other children <laughs> while two of them were in children's hospital for extended time. And for my sisters, who, were my heart and soul during this whole time, helping my family move forward, trying to figure out how we move forward with four children being injured. Yeah. I do have, in closing, as I mentioned earlier, I do say with a heavy heart. Oh, the days were sobbing this my hands morning. Are shaking, sorry. I do have a heavy heart because. Don't apologize. I do have my you. children with me. But as Charlotte has said, um, my brother, who unfortunately passed away two months before this event took place, always told us kindness will take you far. So to those who unfortunately are not with us, I just would like to read the following. I watch you every day. I am always very near. I know deep down in your heart you realize that I am here. I hear you when you speak to me, when you are on your own. You cannot understand the reason, the reason that I am gone. I will never leave you. I am here to keep you strong. Talk to me, I hear you. We share an unbroken bond that will always be. Death won't keep us apart, for our love is forever. Just remember me in your heart and one day we will be together. Live your life and live it full. Don't waste a single day. Remember I am always with you every 
step of the way. And as it has been said before, we do have angels looking over us. And my children now have six more. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. I have struggled to write down words to describe the impact November 21st of 2021 has had on me. What was supposed to be a joyful day was quickly turned into an unimaginable nightmare. Yeah. I woke up that morning excited for the parade instead of dreading it like I always do. Out of all the workshop parades I've walked in the past four years, this was the only one I looked forward to. If only I knew it was going to be the worst day. Uh, my life. Tomorrow. I'll be sentenced. As the parade Tomorrow. started, I went around taking pictures of all the girls while they danced so their parents had action shots of them dancing. We rounded the corner of White Rock and finally made it onto Main Street. I remember seeing the beautiful sunset behind my girls. I recorded them dancing with the sunset behind them, little to no that would be my last video of them. My video was taken 10 minutes before, exactly 10 minutes before the defendant senselessly drove his car straight into my girl's backs. They didn't even have the chance to move out of the way before he plowed into them and continued on his path of destruction. Alice was the first body I saw and picked her up immediately and was quickly yelled at to put her down, not knowing it could have just caused more damage to her. She was awake and conscious. I took off my coat to give her a pillow and laid over her body to shield her. I kept telling her she was going to be okay. One thing that will stick with me forever is the fact that she looked up at me with her teeth chipped and knocked out and said, why would someone do this? I will never forget those words. The defendant was 39 at the time. She was 10. If a 10 year old knew it was wrong, so did he. But he didn't care because he kept driving. Yeah. He is the definition of a monster. After Alice, I was with two more of my girls in the street before waking, making my way to the hospital. The hospital was also another chaotic scene. Bodies all over. People were standing, sitting, and laying in the ground. I saw one of my girls laying on the floor with her mom. I held her hand and kept asking her to squeeze me so I knew she'd stay with us. I think the camera's she still on him because there are minors with them. Every time she'd open her eyes, her mouth would open as she sobbed in absolute pain. I glanced to my left and saw another one of my girls in a wheelchair with about five nurses huddled around her. She wasn't doing good and they knew that. We rushed her to the back as she started to seize and vomit. When her parents arrived, I left the hospital not knowing if I'd ever see some of my girls alive again. The following days, Weeks and months were just as horrible. Four of my girls were in comas. The questions never stopped circulating in my head. Would they ever wake up? Would they even remember who I was? The thing about being a coach is you're kind of stuck in between being a mom and a friend. I felt trapped that I couldn't take their pain away. Trapped that I couldn't be there with them at the hospital every day. I had to put a brave face on for all of my other girls, even though I was completely broken inside. Attempting to describe the impact this evil crime has had on me would be impossible. How can I write into words something that broke me so badly? Emotionally and mentally, I have never been the same since that day. Throughout the whole trial, I waited for the defendant to cry for him to show some sort of remorse. Remorse no. for my girls and everyone else he hurt. He has shown no sense of empathy other than for himself. 
Accurate. Only a monster would show no remorse for such a heinous crime they committed. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he just kept driving. He knew it was wrong because he then attempted to flee after he ditched the car. He's a selfish and cowardly human being who deserves to never see the daylight again. Thank you. Thank you. She's the dance team coach. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of questions about whether Daryl Brooks will get to speak. I don't think it will. My be name today, is Daniel Urell. But he does have a chance to speak. It will probably be tomorrow. I'll read their symbols that I was given. I I J J K K L L. What their names are Charlotte, Alice, Vivian, and Grayson. I'm not a victim. It's very hard for me to stand up here and to be talking about a victim when I don't feel like a victim. My children are the victims. Other people were victims. I'm a beholder. And I feel I'm a beholder of the darkness and the evil, but also the light and the good of the aftermath of the act of the violence that Mr. Brooks brought upon the community that evening. Let's talk about this is a Christmas parade, a Christmas parade that I have attended many times. Uh, my oldest daughter, Charlotte, has been a part of the extreme dance for many years. She was there handing out candy along with my son. Speaking At that candy, time, I did not know that he was handing out candy. I have but I knew that my airheads. two other daughters were a part of the teams. They are part of the junior team and the mini team. I know you don't come here for healthy I living I sometimes advice. walk into the parade. I do not like walking in the July 4th parade because it's too hot. Okay, <laughs> I'd rather walk during the Christmas parade when it's a little bit cooler out. Same. But at that time, I texted my mom and said, Same. would you like to come? I was not supposed to be at that parade. I was supposed to be up north hunting that weekend. So I decided to stay back. Decisions that I reflect upon and think about how I became on that spot uh, off of Wisconsin Avenue or, uh, on that day. So my mom texted me and said, yes, I will come meet you. So I was not, and if she did not do that, I was gonna text my oldest daughter, Charlotte, and say, I'm gonna meet you in the staging area and I will come walk with you and hand out candy. So I was That's standing on Wisconsin with my mom and to say now about this parade. Now this is about children. The Christmas parade is about children, about happiness and love. That evening, if people remember, was very cold and windy, very bitter wind, <laughs> where sometimes that wind gets you and you're almost just standing there. But even through that coldness and the bitter wind, you can really truly feel the happiness within the crowd of the parade. And I thought about that. And it's just about, I knew that possibly around the corner, standing over on, on Wisconsin, that eventually the extreme team would be coming around that corner and, and, I, and I'd see them. And then I had my hood up and it was, it was cold, but then at the corner of my eye and kind of watching it, I see a red SUV start to come around that corner, but not really fast, not very fast because Mr. Brooks, you hit the brakes to go around the corner if you did not hit the brakes, you would have taken that turn way too fast. And then you would have gone into the veteran's he park. He sees you, bro. So that part it didn't seem too odd to me. He knows. My hood was kind of covering. I didn't really see the damage of the SUV. So I saw the SUV turn, but I didn't think it was odd until it did not turn and crashed through the barriers. And then the officer shot three times after it. Silence. The parade now, everyone is silent. Northwest Avenue, I live on that road, two blocks up. That is my road that I live in. Silence. But then people start kind of moving, where it's like the parade just stopped. I move to, this, uh, move to the corner, and then you start seeing and feeling the people starting to stream around the corner, screaming, crying. I have my mom with me. They're saying, yeah. do not go around that corner. There are dead people. Do not go around You're that like, corner. There are my kids. We both looked at each other and I said, where are the children? Yeah. So me and my mom went around that corner and really went through the wake of the evil and hell that Mr. Brooks, that you brought to this community. And going through and seeing and going around the corner and seeing just bodies as far as you can see injured on the ground. 
that sometimes I feel personal guilt that I couldn't truly stop and help some of those people in need. So many people have talked about how I had to keep going. At time, I paused and paused. Not Daryl Brooks. I have my mom screaming, crying, seeing women, adults, people injured, deceit bodies. Once we pass through that section, that's where, Mr. Brooks, you changed me. Because at that point, there's a difference where they talk about an active shooter. Not everyone saw the officer shoot. So in that case, they didn't know. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of just in that all the realm. People are screaming. People are crying. There's people running there's all chaos. over the place. That's where you changed me, Mr. Brooks. That's where I, after a thing, I gave myself up to say, if there's an active shooter, I am willing to get shot in my head. I am running up this street. Where are my Perfect. kids? And that's what I did. And as the darkness descended upon that street, as the sun was going down, and I run up the middle of the street, and I run up to the five points, I start seeing the extreme truck that they use, pom-poms on the ground, but you can't see around there, around. And then I come around. I left my mom, which was a decision that I had to make. She caught up, but I took off running. I found my daughter Alice first, and it was mentioned. She had broken teeth, blood on her face, face on. She's so brave. When I came to her, I screamed her name two to three times. There were people around her trying to help her. She looks at me and she goes, Daddy, I'm okay, I'm okay. And I didn't know what to, and she looked at me and I, I just, at that point, I didn't understand. And she goes, and I go, where's Vivian? She's over there. And I look around and there's my youngest daughter over by the side of the curb, motionless. Her limbs weren't moving, but yet her body was shaking uncontrollably. So I went over there to help there. And from my daughter, Alice, I learned that my son, for the first time handing out candy, was in the parade. I did not know that. I was also told by her that Charlotte, my oldest, was, was there and was, she was injured. <clears throat> you did this. They weren't the only ones, the children. This, this is a Christmas parade about love and happiness, getting ready for the holiday season. I'm sitting in the other room watching other statements and watching you roll your eyes yep. to people's powerful statements. Yep. The hurt They've seen that people you have today, in their souls. And you're rolling your eyes at them yes. and making facial expressions. Yes. If I look around this room, no one else is wearing a mask. What are you hiding from? You. You're wearing a mask. Because he's hiding. I don't see anybody else. Tell him. Tell him the truth. Tell him the truth. I do not forgive you. I do not forgive you because I have not heard these three words from you through this entire trial. I am sorry. No, not he, once. He said my conscience Not once is have clear. I ever heard anything. What I've heard you do is be abusive. Abusive to the judge, abusive to the prosecution, abusive to the witnesses. And I think that's what you have. You're an abuser. And then when people stick up to you, do you want to become? Now you're the victim. Tell him. You carry Tell your him the Bible. Truth. Tell him the truth. And you say you're a God-fearing man. But I feel those scriptures are hollow empty to you now. All four of his children were injured. Just like God has left you. You can pat your chest and have that book open, but I don't believe those, those words and those scriptures mean anything to you anymore. My children are healing, and the community is he healing. If there is no verses between me, between my children and the other people that hurt, the people that lost their lives and their families. But we're all in this together now. Every, all of us, the community. It isn't just people that live in Waukesha. What you did have these this energy that went across, it goes so far for the people that you hurt. And I don't think you truly understand that, or maybe you don't care. Yeah. For the sensing, as other people have said, I feel the maximum 
is appropriate in this situation. The terror, the horror, the pain, the fear that you've caused to so many individuals. And everyone has their own unique path for healing. Yeah. And I hope that you will get sentenced to what you deserve. Thank you. Thank you. The way he described the way he described being at the scene is the way a lot of people will testify that it's not disjointed, but it's it's honestly well, it's um, what Amber Heard so tried to, to recreate and couldn't. To you, Daryl, um, and to the it court. moves forward um, with moments in time that stick out to them. And you are going to be very blessed and honored for that. So thank you. Okay, you guys were amazing, honestly. So thank you. Um, my daughter was not listed as a victim. Um, she was dancing with Extreme Dance Team on November 21st um, with my niece. Um, she was on the right side of the route um, and did not get hit. Um, but she did get, she did not get hit by the car. She got hit by another team member. And that wasn't revealed to me, Daryl, until I watched the video and I, I struggled to understand how my daughter got injured. And I'll get more into that. But that day, you impacted thousands. And I know this is just another story for you. And I wish it would impact you. And I really pray that it does, okay? So, as the parade started, we were by the library. I dropped my daughter off in her position with her team. And I just remember when the parade had stopped and I knew immediately. My sister-in-law got a phone call from my niece and my niece, who's 13 at the time, said my whole team is dead. Our girls were living in fear thinking their teammates were dead, Daryl. They thought they were dead. The images that they saw of their friends will never be erased. <clears throat> We got the phone call, and I did not see you hit anybody. When I hit the main they saw when they street, weren't in court. I saw the dancing grannies dying. I didn't know who they were until the names were released, and I had to figure out my own head who I saw dying. One of the moms, who's an ICU doctor, was working on one of the dancing grannies. There was blood everywhere, Daryl. You have to see what you did. I had no idea what I was walking into. And I honestly, I'm so sorry for all the families who lost their loved ones. Um, what I saw, no human being should ever see. Everyone that was in the court witnessed what yeah. you did, but I, I lived it, I walked it. I heard things I didn't want to hear. Um, I heard someone screaming over Jane Kulik. Um, and I no longer could remember anything after that, after I saw Jean dying, till I got to my daughter. We were ushered into the bakery, and I screamed for my daughter. She was safe, but I have survivor's guilt over her living, and that's not fair. And I think part of them saying his name Six is that he died. wouldn't acknowledge There's it in a court. mom who doesn't have her baby boy anymore, and I got to go home with her that night. Once we were released from the bakery, we had to walk back through the nightmare. It was a crime scene. There were bodies covered up that my daughter had to see a dead person covered up because it was a crime scene. Oh, the Nancy. next day, my daughter woke up and screaming in pain. I hear you. Night they didn't take her to the hospital. Thank you. You didn't have to super chat. I did what I thought was best to take her to the chiropractor and get her x-rays. That's just, I'm a naturopath, so that's what I do. Her doctor has never seen such a twisted spine, neck, pelvis. We had to put her back together. She was, but emotionally she was broken. She had nightmares. She missed school weekly.
And it's because of another little girl who hit her from the car that you hit. And I figured that out a few weeks ago. I didn't know what happened. Daryl, I don't know what's in your heart. I don't. It's fair. But also God tells us that we will know them by their fruit. I'm a Christian. I believe in the Bible. I believe in any everything that the Bible has to say. I'm not perfect either. But what we witnessed during the trial was you reading or holding your Bible, even in anger, saying that you were reading the book to the judge. What is hard to witness is said that. that reading that Bible has not brought you to repentance. When I read that Bible, the things that I've done, I am repentant and I say sorry for what I've done. I'm not perfect. So when the word of God convicts us by reading the word, it produces change. I have not seen that in you. Not once have you repented to even ask for forgiveness for what you've done. Not once have you admitted what you've done. Can you not face what you've done? You have to. You have to face what you've done. Wow. You presented to the court that you didn't want to be called by your name. This is a trial that you caused. The DA didn't cause this trial. My daughter and her team didn't cause this trial. The state of Wisconsin and all parties involved didn't cause this trial. You did. You have to own that. Yeah. To me, this is not a man who's after God's heart. You used the Bible and you used God. That's blasphemy. I know what I'm talking about. This is not a mental, matter of mental health or a system failing you. You failed yourself. If you are a man like you say you are and you were not brought up this way and you were brought up in a Christian home, go back to your Christian roots. Go back to the man that God actually wanted you to be. But in turn, you have, no, you have not had any responsibility to confess of what you did that day. You can't face that you murdered people. You've injured hundreds. You emotionally traumatized thousands. And not repent from what you did. To repent means that you... And to be saved means you get to enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You have to ask for forgiveness. You have to admit what you did. This is not going to change bringing people back. It's not going to change the 21st. It's not going to change people's lives. But you might actually help someone heal just by saying, I'm sorry. You also said in your closing statement that this was God's will for what you did that day. He did say that. And that I believe is a false testimony of the God that I know. You are a father. And my, my daddy, my heavenly father, would never, ever want anyone to be murdered with a car as the murder weapon. All those you hurt and killed they, that day, they're his children. Doesn't matter what age they were. <sighs> John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins, to cleanse us from unrighteousness. That includes you, Daryl. You must confess to all these people in God so that you can be saved. And that's not popular for you to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is possible. The man hanging on the cross, like the earlier statement, he was saved that day and the other one wasn't. And that I want you to sit with. For the wages of sin is death. That means hell. That means hell. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. So I'm angry for what you did. I'm sad that a lot of people don't get to spend another day with their loved ones. I'm sad that a lot of my dance family, we don't know. I mean, we don't know the outcome of their brain injuries and what's their future. You have to traumatize families and people that have witnessed you, thousands. You killed six people. But maybe, just maybe you could bring some peace to some of these people. Do you hear me, Daryl? Instead of rolling your eyes that what you did, disrespect him. And I know people yelled at you today, but I'm not coming to you in anger. I'm coming to you in wow. unconditional love because that's what our Father offers us. I don't know if I have forgiven you yet, and I know that's what God wants me to do, but I think that you could just offer a little peace by just saying I'm sorry. She's Thank like, you. do you hear me? Do you hear me? People November have yelled at you. November 21st will never be the same. It was a very tragic day for us all. With this day Little being voices. the day after my birthday, November 20th, I was thinking you'd be a good day. 
I was going to be dancing in the parade with Waukesha Extreme Dance Team. I loved this team as a home. <laughs> My mom, dad, aunt, and cousin were sitting at the end of the parade route. As we got closer to the parade starting, I got a really uneasy feeling in my stomach. As me being a Christian, I believed it was the Holy Spirit warning me. My cousin was also on the team with me. In the parade, she was in front of me and we were both on the far right side. As we danced in the parade, I knew something was wrong. Something just didn't sit right with me. After this feeling, my hearing went out. All I heard was loud thump noises. My friends getting hit by the SUV. <laughs> I had seen two girls fly across the concrete and hit the curb in front of me. I got out of the way, confused and in shock. I remembered I had left my phone in the car. I saw my cousin Brooklyn get her phone out and call her mom. As a 13 year old, the words she spoke on the phone are words I would never want to hear someone I cared so deeply for say. As her mom answered the phone, not knowing what had happened, Brooklyn spoke and said, Mom, my whole team is dead. People then told us there was a shooting and we needed to take it to safety, so we in went yes, inside of know. a bakery. They told us all to go into the back of the bakery for safety. I called my mother off of somebody's phone and told her to get inside and be safe. But she told me no, she was going to find me. I told her the building name I was in. I sat there drowning in my thoughts until my mom had got there. As she entered, I heard her screaming my name. She hugged me, and a few seconds later, somebody screamed that there was an active shooter, so we all dropped to the ground. I moved to the corner where Brooklyn, my aunt, and other friends were sitting. It felt like we were sitting there for hours when it wasn't that long. As we sat there, my best friend, my cousin, was saying something that would haunt me forever. She sat there with her head tucked in her knees, repeating over and over and over again to herself how she thought she was going to die. I thought my best friends had died that day. And this thought will forever be with me. We eventually got let out to walk back to our cars. As we were walking out, I saw one of my best friends laying on the ground of the bakery. She had not been taken to the hospital yet. I stayed calm that whole time up until I saw her. As I walked back to my car, link, link armed with my friend, we tried to look at our feet and not up at the street, but I couldn't help looking up. I'd seen bodies covered up in the streets. That image will never leave my mind. Nope. I woke up the next day not being able to move my body. I screamed and cried thinking I was paralyzed. We didn't go to the hospital but to the chiropractor. I got x-rays done and they came back showing the worst whiplash my chiropractor has ever seen. My spine was thrown off and twisted in ways it should not have been. It was so bad my spine could barely support holding up my head. It was the worst pain I've ever felt. My mom asked me if I had got hit in by the car, but I told her I couldn't remember. For the last year, I've been recovering still. Many days, I'd feel pain unimaginable. I also had got horrible migraines a lot. Many days, my whole arm would go numb from the injury. Some days, I couldn't feel any of my left side. These days were some of the scariest. We couldn't figure out how I got injured until a video was released. It showed how a girl that had got hit flew into me, injuring me. Not only did this day change my, my, my life physically, but mentally too. I struggled with depression afterwards. I blamed myself for this awful tragedy. It's not your fault. I told myself there was some way I could have stopped it from happening, even though it was something I had no control over. My mental health declined majorly. I tried my best to act okay so people wouldn't worry, but many days I just couldn't. I skipped school so many days weekly because I couldn't mentally go. I was in so much darkness I couldn't find any light. I tried my best asking for help, but I was too scared. I thought about you every single day, Daryl. I thought, how could any man do this to any other human being? I'm sorry to all those who lost people they'll never get to see again. It angered me every day. It hurt to think about. This day will always and forever have a place in my mind. 
The days after we waited to find out info about my friends. <laughs> Some of them had horrible brain injuries and other horrible physical injuries. <laughs> At one moment, I was told my friend Julia would maybe not make it. <laughs> it broke me hearing that. <laughs> Knowing I cared about all these people so much, it hurt me to know they were in a situation like this. As I continued to try to heal, I realized it takes a long time to heal physically and mentally. Yep. I didn't think my mental health would ever get better. I thought this up until I surrendered my life to Jesus. I leaned on him for help. Not the minors. A verse that stuck with me is Philippians 4.13. They don't show the minors. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. This verse reminded me that I can get through this and will get through this yes, with the help can. of God. I knew if I could that my friends could as well. As I wrote this here, I finally realized this all truly happened to me. I guess I never really allowed myself to believe it because I never wanted to. But we must all face things in our lives. As I watched the trial go on, you always had your Bible, but you never repented, you never asked for forgiveness for ruining people's lives. John 16, 13 states, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak. He will declare the things unto you that are to come. And as you sat there with your Bible, all you had to do was declare what was true, to confess what you had done, when you knew you had done it and you knew it was wrong. But you sat there, you rolled your eyes, not caring that you killed innocent people. Did you see the judge look over at Brooks when so she was saying So I'm so that? horribly sorry to all that had lost to all people who had lost things that day. Loss of friends and family members, loss of being able to be the same person ever again. I'm sorry to all who struggle with health problems for the rest of their lives. I know that I lost a piece of myself that day. You don't need to apologize. And I'm still trying to find it. You didn't do anything. This day was supposed to be a happy day filled with smiles and laughter. Yes, it was. But it had got turned into a tragedy. This day will never be the same for any of us. A lot of the victims making statements have said that they are sorry, have talked about how guilty they feel. Not uncommon, truly not uncommon, but it's not their fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It happened to you. And I think it's really powerful that people share Dear judge, Doc, their healing. My name is Yuretsi Becerra Montes. On November 21st, 2021, my life changed, my life and my family's life changed forever. The day that was supposed to be a day of joy that became a nightmare to me, my family, and our community. On that day, my parents and my siblings witnessed the red SUV that drove into my dance team. My mom, my mom ran without thinking she could be hurt too. She remembers the red SUV that almost hit her while, she, while running into the road because he was coming her way, but he swerved. Yes, they couldn't find me court. right away because I was under a car that was playing music, playing the music for us. I flew 15 to 20 feet from where I was dancing. I was lucky that I wasn't injured like my friends because my head bumped into a truck that was playing the music for us and I fell on the street and hit the back of my head on someone's leg but I didn't suffer from a major injury. <laughs> my family calls me a miracle because things would have been worse and maybe things would look would look different if my injuries were more severe. I spent a couple of nights in the hospital, but the worst part was that I woke up and asked my dad what I was doing in the hospital because I was dancing and I thought my nightmare was over. It was a trauma it was a traumatic experience that traumatized all of us. Yeah. While I was in the hospital, I I was remembering what really happened. I was dancing that day and I had a smile on my face. Once I heard what I thought were fireworks. It were good jobs. 
But at the moment, I knew that nothing happened in Waukesha and that I'm safe. And so I kept dancing. I was hurt that day. I was struck by the red SUV. I felt like I was going to die. <laughs> I woke up on the ground to my family surrounding me, thinking it was all a dream, not knowing what was going on. My body was hurting and I couldn't move. I saw the looks on their faces. My mom was crying and so was the rest of my family. My mom kept telling me the paramedics to go help go help others other people that were unconscious. My daughter is awake and is talking to us. Please go help other people. Others. My mom was a hero. She helped a little girl that was hurt in the middle of the road that was being stepped on. She carried her and put her on the side of the street and asked people to help her because she was still looking for me. I remember someone holding my hand in my head, telling me it was going to be okay. Then I heard someone yell, active shooter. Scared and shocked at the disbelief of what was going on, my dad had to carry me to a bakery for our safety. All I could hear were ambulance sirens and screaming. I couldn't understand what was happening because there was so much going on. I wasn't sure if it was real life or a dream. But at the moment, I was really hoping it was a dream because I didn't want it to be real. I had to witness everything around me and my friends on the ground unconscious, not knowing what would happen to them and if they would even wake up. Since that day, I've been traumatized with sirens, screaming, fireworks, being in big crowds, and hearing the song I danced to when the tragedy hit. After that day, it was a very hard topic to talk about, as well as now. To this day, I still struggle with pain and nightmares and PTSD. I don't know when my body is going to feel normal again. All of this made me sad, angry, and anxious because I cannot understand why someone could do this to our community. All of Waukesha has experienced this tragedy even if they weren't there to see it. As in losing loved ones, having to go through an injury or families that were injured as well. People who watched it happen and see their loved ones get hurt or even just seeing this tragedy on the news. This affected our community of Waukesha to the point that some people weren't and still aren't ready to go back downtown or yeah. even participate in a parade again. I'll always struggle from that day and it haunts me and so many others to think that a tradition for over 50 years has become a remembrance of the people who died and the injuries that occurred that day. I forgive him after everything he's done even though he never apologized for his actions because I'm thankful justice has been served and that he won't do damage to anyone again. I thank you, Your Honor, and everyone in the jury for making justice for all of us and our community. I ask you, Your Honor, that he won't ever see the light of day again. I thank you for everyone who supported us through difficult times. Thank you. They are switching who's speaking. The last group of speakers were not um we're not on camera because a lot of them were minors and the minors were standing with them. I would like to first address the picture that would be putting, we'll be putting up on the easel. I don't know. In if that picture, see it. it is my sister, Jessalyn Torres, victim HH, in the ICU. It is what a lot of other victims have looked like from tubes keeping them alive to machines being watched over 
every minute of the day to see if they're doing okay. <sighs> November 21st was like any other Christmas parade. My sister was dancing, my mom was pulling my baby sister in a wagon, and my brother and I were walking with them throwing candy. Everything was so normal in the beginning. Everyone was lined up in their ordered <laughs> orders and people were taking pictures, laughing, talking, dancing. The mood was very joyful and then all of a sudden it wasn't. The images and events from that day still weigh on heavily on my mind. <laughs> Vivian Urell was the little girl I stayed with for a little bit after the tra tragic event. I, I still can feel the blood on my hands after I wiped it off her dripping head with my cold fingers. I told her that I was there for her so that she knows that somebody was with her as I listened to her whimpering cry that stays in my mind. <laughs> I cried when I found my baby sister without my mother. She was confused about what just happened so I held her in my arms squeezing her as tight as I could. <laughs> I remember finding my mother and sister, the vision of my mother's face in a panic trying to puzzle everything together. She had her hands over my sister's body along with others, holding my sister's head. I screamed when I saw the sight of my sister. Her face looked destroyed with her body half naked from her clothes getting ripped off. I still remember my other family members' faces and screams when I, they saw my sister lying there. I broke down and fell to my knees. I felt broken when my grandmother started breaking down and screaming. The moment when they lifted my sister's unconscious body with a blanket into the back of a sheriff's car made me suddenly not breathe. It felt like there was no more air left in the world. I felt like I was being stabbed in the heart when I read my mother's messages about all the injuries my sister had. It was one text ever after another. I couldn't believe it was all real. From the trauma, I couldn't go back home because I knew my mom or sister wasn't going to be there. So I went to my friends, and my friend helped me that night as my body shook. The pain of not being able to see my mother and hearing the cries of my two-year-old sister constantly saying that she wants her mom <laughs> broke my heart into little pieces. The whole time my sister was in the hospital, it was a blur, a tunnel vision every day, hour, minute, and second. We were lucky to have a Thanksgiving miracle to be able to see my mother for the first time after the incident. It relieved some of my pain and anxiety and it felt nice to have so much weight removed off my chest when I hugged my mother, even with it being a short visit at Children's Hospital. My family had so much support from friends, other family in the community. Even though we had so much support, I felt like I was alone. I should have been getting the support from my own mother, but she couldn't leave my sister's side at the hospital. I felt forgotten. I was trying to give my other siblings support when I thought... Oh, I'm sorry. When I thought like I didn't have anyone to support me, I felt selfish even though I shouldn't have. Crying in class every day, I didn't want to be anywhere but home, wishing that my mom and sister were with me. Not being able to physically move from the hurt that I felt, I felt drained. My mental health was declining so much. I lost interest in the people and things I loved so dearly. I was miserable. Finally, two weeks later, getting the call that my sister was awake felt like my heartbeat got back to normal again. Two weeks? I showed everyone pictures with pure joy on my face that my sister was awake. Two weeks. <sighs> two days before Christmas, they came back home. Everything was going okay until one night my sister felt like she suddenly couldn't breathe. My mother rushed her back up to the hospital. They found out later she had built up scar tissue in her trachea from being on the ventilator for so long and getting so immune to the drugs that she was on. She would wake up and move around in a panic. My sister has a, has had around 15 surgeries on her trachea since. Oh. One day my mom was looking on the scab on the back of my sister's head. And when I saw everything from the parade came back to my mind, the images of that day happening over and over and over again, it brought back all the pain and anxiety. 
I laid in bed alone, crying because I couldn't sleep. I was back to the beginning where I would cry all night. The images were so vivid in my mind. My mom called me upstairs and held me in her arms. The next day, my uncle explained what PTSD was like. As the air gets thicker, my chest feels like it's getting smaller. I realized that this is just the beginning of a long and terrible road. I easily jump at little things. I have panic attacks every time I cross the street. I hate fireworks for the reason that they make me cry. <laughs> Still to this day, the sound of tires screeching sends me into a panic as I look for my siblings. The pictures come racing back to my mind, tears come racing down my face, and as I see is everyone is okay except for me. The pain is still sitting with me, the visions are always there to jump back at different times. It's been hard to, to be the oldest sibling, having to feel like I need to manage the house and deal with my own mental strain while my mother is constantly gone dealing with my sister's medical care. Oh, that one incident turned my life upside down and life has just hasn't been the same since. She's just trying to hold it Most down. Most importantly, I just want to thank everyone who was there for my family and supported us unconditionally at the time my family was needed most. And for you, Darrell Brooks. I hope you know I've never had so much hate for someone until I met you. Everyone saying that they wish Wisconsin had the death penalty for you? I simply disagree because you do not deserve a simple death. Those six people who passed did not have a simple death. I hope you sit and suffer every minute of your day. Thank you. Yes, my oldest just got home from school. So he came in and he was like, oh... Today is the sentencing. I was like, yes, today is the sentencing. Um, it is not the first time he's seen me cry over cases. So. <sighs> I'm just getting to do it in a hoodie instead of doing it in court. Um. Um, I'm just one Taurus victim, HH. And life after November 21st, 2021 will never be the same. Oh, baby. They're not showing the minors on video, which I agree with. But they are going uh, to have people standing with, with them. The walks stream dance to support team, them. Team. I loved and committed countless hours, too. And they will let them stop if they want Two to. Two weeks after the parade, I woke up in the hospital confused, uncomfortable, and in pain. And sometimes the victim impact I remember will take over doctors reading told the my mom that I needed to have a major surgery to fix my pelvis that was broken in three places. So I would be able to walk again and dance again. I was nervous, scared, and I just wanted to be with my family again. After my surgery, my doctor told me that I had to be in a wheelchair until my pelvis was healed. When I got in my wheelchair, I felt stuck, trapped in a place that I just wanted to get out of. When I got to see my sisters and brother for the first time ever since the parade, the DAs are trying so hard. I could just so feel hard. the weight lifted off their shoulders. They're trying so hard to hold me. it together. I was not okay, but I was there. When I finally got home after a month of being in the hospital, it was non-stop appointments and physical therapy. Two days after I got discharged from the hospital, I had to go back for an emergency surgery because I couldn't breathe. We found out that being on the ventilator caused scar tissue to build around my trachea. I've had over 15 surgeries on my trachea since then. And listen my to mom her. had to help me with all my personal care and other needs, including showering, getting dressed, using the bathroom, doing my hair, and making my food until I learned how to get around easier. I had to go to physical therapy to learn how to walk again. When I started using a walker, I felt embarrassed and that people were just staring at me. I remember wanting to dance again, being with my team again, but knowing that I couldn't physically dance. I had to reteach my body to move how it used to move. Learning how to dance all over again. My balance was off 
making dancing impossible at first. But the mental pain was worse. Yeah. As I couldn't watch my teammates dance without me, I missed over half of the school year. When I got back to school, I felt uncomfortable being in a wheelchair. I felt like people were just looking and wondering. I missed out on my last year and days at elementary school. Time and memories that I will never get back. This past summer, I had to go in for my second major surgery. The surgery was on my trachea called a trachea resection. The doctors decided to do the surgery because I still couldn't breathe after all my procedures. My throat wouldn't stay open and it closed up to 80%. I was basically so breathing through the size of a drinking straw. Now I have a scar across my neck that stands out and won't ever go away. And a scar where I had surgery to fix my pelvis and multiple other scars from the her, her, horrific things that happened that night. My scars make me insecure of my body and that I can't wear regular swimsuits because I can't feel people's eyes on me. When I wear shorts, I have blood speaking out and my scars, my scars will be there forever. So I will every day be reminded of what happened to me. Yeah. Beyond my original month in the hospital, I missed out on my entire summer because I was recovering from surgeries. <clears throat> when I went back, when I went home, I wasn't able to do normal 11 year old things. I wasn't able to swim, jump, go on rides at fairs. All I could do was watch. Watch people have fun during their summer. Watch people play during their summer. Well, I continued to watch. <coughs> I had to act like it didn't bother me because I didn't want to ruin summer for everyone else. Now I am 12 years old in sixth grade. I'm happy that I'm at a new school with new people. Now people won't treat me differently because they don't know my medical past. Now that I'm in sixth grade, I have to ride the bus. I hate going to the bus stop because it scares me whenever cars drive by oh, me baby. or make noises. Yep. I'm also dancing again. I do two three-hour practices each week. And this past weekend, I had my first dance competition, which is a big deal to me because this is my first competition in a year now. I still have appointments and procedures on my trachea to see how everything is healing. I also got cleared from physical therapy. I've gotten really far this year. It is getting closer and closer to November 21st, and I don't think I'm ready for this day to come. On yeah. this day each year, I and many others will think how a peaceful event that has been a traditional Waukesha for over 50 years and brought smiles and laughter to everyone turned into tragedy. I want to say thank you to my coach Alyssa for proving to me that I can do anything I put my mind to. Aww. Thank you to Ms. Hansen for helping me write my statement when I didn't know how to put everything into words. Thank you to all the doctors and nurses who took care of me in the hospital. And most important, thank you to my mom who was by my side for the whole tr tragic journey. Thank you for listening. Oh, it's hard at 11 because you just don't want to be different. And I hope that as as she grows, she will see that the things that she didn't want people to know are the things that make her strong and unique and powerful. But at that age, you just don't Hi, I'm Amber. want to Mother deal with Justin it every day. I've been very open all this time about the injuries my daughter has obtained the night of November 21st, 2021. I even created daily logs so people could stay informed on her condition. But I've never truly talked about my feelings and how that day has affected my family. So this will be a very hard one for me. Let me put picture one. Yeah. The event started off joyous. And I had four of my children with me that evening. She sounds exhausted. All of which still her suffer in soul. some form to this day. Her soul sounds exhausted. The screams, the sounds of the people being hit, watching as their bodies flew, the visions of their bodies lying everywhere, and me yelling, searching for Jessalyn, still replays over and over in my head. 
I found my daughter lying in front of the music truck, nowhere near the rest of her teammates, in the middle of the five points with her clothes ripped from her body, road rash everywhere, blood leaking out of the corner of her mouth and half of her face missing. Picture two. My poor child was ripped out of her shoes, drug under the front end, and thrown out from that vehicle. There was no ambulance, no medical equipment, nothing to help me and my child. I have never felt this helpless in my life. All I could do was hold my child and tell her mommy was here and that she will be okay. Picture three. A deputy and an officer came to help get my daughter on top of the blankets that were covering her naked body and drove us to the hospital in the back of an SUV. I am grateful for the actions they took that day, along with all the others who ran out into the street to help my daughter. When we got to Children's Hospital, I sat there in a chair numb as I watched multiple doctors, nurses, and medical staff rush in and out of the room examining my child's lifeless body. My mental state was confused. I lost who I was, and I felt like I was sitting in the middle of some crazy movie scene where there was so much commotion around you, but you hear none of it. I stayed numb from then on. It was my coping mechanism. There was no way to prepare myself for the news I was about to hear from the medical staff. Her injuries included a fractured skull, a hematoma behind her eye, eight broken ribs, which was four on each side, bilateral lung contusions, three fractured lumbar vertebrae. Her bowel was damaged. Her kidney was ripped from its blood supply and was dying. She now only has one kidney left. Her liver was lacerated, her pelvis broken in three areas, going from front to back and down the middle in the shape of a T, and in two areas on the back side. Her spine has a permanent curve in it. Severe road rash all over her body. Pictures four or five. Go to five, please. That's her backside from being drugged. Go to the next one, please. That's the other side of her backside from being drugged. Next one, please. That's her leg. A whole chunk of meat was missing from her leg. It's incredible that she survived. Injuries. She was given multiple bags of blood and platelets as we were transferred to the fourth floor ICU for critical care. It was there that the doctor sat me down and explained how she needed to be intubated because of the extensive damage to her lungs and body. The hardest moment of my life was making the phone call to my children. The hardest moment of my life was making the phone call to my other children so they could tell their sister how much they loved her because I had no idea what was to come next. They were so confused and scared and I could hear the hurt and pain in their voices. And I had no explanation to give them other than just tell your sister how much you love her. I couldn't be there to hold them while they cried in a time that they needed me the most. I still hold so much guilt because I couldn't be there with them since she I had to be, be with their sister places. whose life was uncertain at the time. They were also mentally and emotionally traumatized. There were so many times I just wanted to hold Jessalyn or lay in the bed next to her, but I couldn't since there were tubes coming from every direction and her head, hands were tied down to the bed. The most I could do was hold her hand, stroke her head, and whisper in her ear, I love you, and Mommy is here. I believe it was day two when we spent three to four hours just to thoroughly clean out all of the road rash, and it took multiple attempts to get as much of the leaves, sticks, and rocks out of her hair. There were so many sleepless nights. Every day there were new issues, high fevers, allergic reactions, sepsis, and monitors that were blaring and alarming because her stats were up and down constantly. I felt like I just could not catch a break. She was not easy to keep sedated, and there were so many wrestling matches to keep her as still as possible. It was also exhausting, but yet I had to hold it all together. I had to be the rock. I hated watching the machine they used to help clear out her lungs. It was similar to a nebulizer, but had a force so strong, and it was so loud. It would pump the meds in and jostle her whole body. Just hearing how loud the machine was and watching her body being uncontrollably shaken was overwhelming, but it had to be done to clear all the fluid and mucus buildup from all the damage that you caused to her lungs. 
The time we were trying to wean her off the ventilator, I sat and watched the machine, hoping this girl would start to breathe on her own and not rely on the machine to do it for her. It took days and many trials. I would get my hopes up and then they would be let down. I would talk to her. Come on, Jessa, you have to breathe above the machine. You can do it and I believe in you. Until finally I realized she wasn't ready. I just let her know it was okay and I'm here by your side and when you are ready, I will still be here right next to you by your side. I had so many mixed emotions the day Jessalyn was extubated. I couldn't wait to hear her voice again, to hug her and to tell her how much I missed her. It felt like my girl was being reborn again, but I was not expecting the new hardships to come. She has had a total of 18 surgeries. Her first major surgery was to fix her pelvis. 12 hours my child was gone away from me that day. She now has a metal plate with 11 screws holding her pelvis together for the rest of her life. Thank you. She's not done growing yet. It took months for her to start to walk again. I never imagined that at 11 years old, we would be celebrating the first time she sat up or stood, and of all things, take out a tube feeding. You can go to picture nine. How does that look for sitting up? Does she look happy? I don't think so. Winning off the narcotics and Show dealing him. with the hallucinations she had was terrible. Show him. Make him see the things you had to she see. She was so mean at times, and it hurt more than you could imagine on this inside, but I knew that that wasn't my child. Deep down, I was so angry, frustrated, and wanted to scream. So I'd just step out of the room and cry a little, take a deep breath, and walk back into that room stronger than I was before. You can take that down. Discharge day was so exciting and scary. I could finally see my two-year-old, my other children, and be comfortable in my home. But managing all of Jessalyn's medical appointments, medications, daily shots, and personal needs on top of caring for four other children was difficult. Her dignity was taken away as I had to do everything for her for personal cares. And want, what 11-year-old wants her mom to wash their bottom? She would get frustrated trying to use both the wheelchair and a walker, and half the time she would forcefully shake that walker around and toss it off to the side. And having to load and unload her wheelchair, walker, and medical equipment took about 30 minutes in the freezing cold. The first day I had to take Jessa and my two-year-old out was rough. When backing out of the driveway, I ran over her walker and broke it. I laugh now, but yep, I forgot to put it in the car. I sat there in disbelief, laughing oh, and crying all at the same time. Yep. I was a mental wreck. Yep. <laughs> we ended up back at Children's Hospital a couple of days after discharge when Jessalyn was struggling to breathe. Found out she was suffering from tracheal stenosis from the initial prolonged intubation. Can you do picture 10? That was the hole she was trying to breathe through. About the size of a straw, a little bit smaller. 80% of her trachea was closed off. You can go to picture 11. That's the size they had to pop it open to, just so that way she could actually breathe. You can turn that off, please. I slept on my couch for months because her breathing was so bad that I was scared she would stop breathing yeah. in her sleep. 15 surgeries on her trachea before we made the decision to do a tracheal resection. I hated the thought of doing this major surgery. The thought of possibly opening her chest to lift the chest muscles to give more stretch to the trachea or the possibility of injuring her vocal cords along with all the other risks, they were also very overwhelming. We only get one breathing tube and if this major surgery wasn't successful, then she would end up with a hole and a tube in her neck for the rest of her life to breathe from. Justin and I both cried together after that doctor left the room. How do you mentally prepare yourself or even your child for this type of news? Tell her, telling her that she would be asleep and intubated for another two weeks and in the ICU and then eventually go home once we did the whole removing the tube, feeding, sitting, standing, walking, and everything all over again. We were all going back to square one. She was so calm that day when she left the room for her surgery, but I knew she was freaking out on the inside. She held herself together so well. 
And I remember her looking at me saying, Mom, why are you crying as I let the silent tears roll down my face? That surgery took six and a half hours. I stared out windows and paced for hours, hoping for the best outcome. It's okay to take a break if On you need it. On day two after it's that okay. surgery, a lobe of her lung collapsed. She was running fevers and she was retaining too much fluid. We continued for days with her vitals going sky high, then dangerously low. Fevers up to 104 and she became septic all over again. It was day four through the night when everything become be, became beyond scary. Her body swelled in a matter of hours and scans became, came back showing that she had pneumatosis intestinalis and necrotizing oh. enterocolitis. And she was almost rushed down for an emergency bowel resection as this had become life-threatening extremely fast. Wow. There was no real understanding as to why this was happening other than that th her intestines were not fully healed from the parade incident. <sighs> Her body was shutting down. Nine days she spent on the ventilator. A total of 12 in the ICU and more on the main floor. It was another full two week stay at Children's Hospital. Two weeks of mental and emotional upset and two weeks away from my other children. And if you are sitting here thinking that being taken off the ventilator is all pretty rainbows and butterflies, you're wrong. It's nothing like what you see on TV. Yeah. It's got to be hard for her to look at the pictures, but I'm glad that she brought them in to say, this is what happened. This is what happened. This is what you did. This is what you caused. This is what I've lived through because of what you did. Hi. Hi. Tap. That's traumatizing. I can't. I know, that is traumatizing, isn't it? It is traumatizing. It's okay, though. You're doing great, right? Yeah. Get you some oxygen. I can't. You can't. Most, most states, no, the victim you just breathe. impact. No, just breathe. The victim impact um, and victim funds can help cover it. breathe and cough up all that it. mucus for hours. Hours. So not a waste. Her mental state was off as she thrashed around and freaked out as the nurses were adjusting her bed, screaming, Mom, help, help me, Mom, they're going to shock me back to life. She thought that she was dying and that they were going to kill her. I knew that she had some worries before that surgery, but to this extent was beyond belief. We had to give her meds to calm her as her thrashing around was our biggest fear as that could tear her trachea all over again. Even on all those drugs, isn't it funny how she can still express how traumatizing this has all been? The summer went on with more appointments, physical therapy, surgeries, activity restrictions, winning off of narcotics that made her so mean to the point that I had to step away and do that silent cry again. We tried to find a little happiness in every event that we could. It was hard for her to watch her teammates who were all back dancing. She cried because she wanted to go watch the state competition, but couldn't since she had to be in another surgery. We felt left out and alone as we were still dealing with major medical issues months later. When out in the public, people would gawk, make hand gestures, <coughs> and make comments about the scars across her neck. Number 13. Why can't we just not comment on people's bodies? Along with the marks and lumps on her body. Kids are cruel and have made some really harsh comments to the point I have felt the surge of uncontrollable anger. Yeah. She was tired that day. <laughs> <laughs> At fairs and festivals, Jessalyn wasn't able to ride rides because of the possibility of tearing her trachea. You can take it down. She was so sad and angry, more angry than sad. Her friends and family were having a blast while she was standing watching my heart hurt for her i had to talk her through the anger over and over and over and teach her how to find happiness in everything we do no matter how big or how small but she was right it wasn't fair she shouldn't have had to suffer not one person should have had to my heart was broken the day she purposely stood out in the sun because she wanted the scars off of her face can you, pull it? you can post it 
My heart was broken the day she purposely stand out in the sun because she wanted the scars off of her face and wanted her beautiful brown skin back. I guess it made sense to her that tanning would help. While riding in the car, she, would, she will freak out 11. when there is a squirrel on the road. A squirrel. Okay, a squirrel. She gasps, yells, and throws her arms out and hits me. While I'm calming her, I sit there and envision how I'm sure that that's the exact reaction she had right before she took your SUV to her chest. This is all just a small fraction of what we have been, what we've all been through and what I've had to push through in the last year. You can take it down. Jocelyn still has ongoing medical care, more surgeries, more appointments, memory loss, pain in her hip, and permanent curve in her spine. I hate the comments she makes about whenever she feels her hardware in her hip. But my girl is a warrior. Yes, she she is. is back dancing. She may not be at the skill level she used to be, but she has not given up. As a parent, I have held so much guilt for not protecting my child that day. I have sat there by my child when she was at her worst. I was there for every little step of progress and I was there for every setback. I have cried, I have been angry, I have had to deal with fear, mental trauma, PTSD, exhaustion, frustration, defeat, loneliness, and anxiety attacks. There are days when I feel that SUV hitting my chest and can't breathe as if I am my daughter. I could feel her pain and it was excruciating. There have been times where I felt justice wouldn't be served until he had to take that SUV to his chest, drug, thrown, and left with his bare body in the middle of the street exactly the same way he treated my child. This man has brought out such an ugly side of me I never knew existed. It's not your life on the line, Mr. Brooks, and it never has been. Yep. It was my child's life on the line that night, along with many others. And as much as you were hoping to get some sympathy, I have none to give. I'm yeah, glad I don't have to fucks. hear those words come from your mouth anymore. I guess Good you should you, have Mom. thought about all those children of yours that you don't get to hold before you decided to turn that corner and step on that gas pedal. And I hope the look on my daughter's face before you ran her over haunts you for the rest of your life. Your immature behavior of rolling your eyes and twirling your fingers doesn't bother me. I have fought through one of my biggest fears this past year, and I won. Because you are a warrior. I am much stronger than you. Yes, you are. I have found my peace. This man may have been able to turn my life upside down and almost take my daughter from me, <clears throat> take time away from my other children, create such heartache, pain, and mental turmoil, but the one thing he was not successful at was taking my strength, Jessalyn's strength, along with the strength I have instilled in all my other children. He doesn't get the satisfaction of thinking we have become weak. My family has grown stronger, have become closer, and now have a better appreciation for the time we have together. He did not, cannot, and will not break me. No, he hasn't. Thank you. Thank you. The, the strength, the strength to not just be a caregiver, but to try to parent through that. I don't know how people get up and keep going. The day November 21st came around, I was excited to dance with all my best friends. Little did I know that was the worst day of my life. That day changed my life forever. My family and my friends thought that that was the last day they would have with me. I can't even imagine what everyone was going through while I was unstable, in a coma, with a brain injury that later led to me having to get part of my skull taken out and put back in two months after. Yeah. This major change in my life was all from the car that had struck me and many others on November 21st, 2021. I became worried and stressed because people treated me differently and I saw myself as no longer strong, but weak. You survived getting hit by a car. I didn't like that I could have a seizure. I lost my Very hair strong. and it made me feel bad about myself. This made a huge impact on my life. It changed the way my friends and family all see me now. I hated myself and I hated what I had to go through. 
yeah. it was hell. I just want all the awful days in the hospital, trauma, all procedures to be put behind me so I can continue to live my life like all the days before the worst. November 21st, 2021. However, since I am a victim of the Christmas parade, this will always stay with me. Thank you. But it's not going to break you. And I think that's the thing we've seen over and over today. Good afternoon. Is the strength of As everyone who's spoken. As I stand here before spoken. you today, I realize that you don't know who I am. I have been here almost every single day since this trial started. I realize that I am what, what I am about to share will not change what happened that day. But I hope it will give me some sort of peace and help me continue to heal. The Waukesha Christmas Parade was an event that both of my daughters have been involved in for many years with their dance team. This year, on the day of the parade, it was very cold and windy, so instead of walking alongside the dancers, I decided to take on a new role. I volunteered, volunteered to sit in the bed of the pickup truck that was leading our dance team. I was filling all the parent volunteer buckets with candy. I had the best view of my daughter the entire time. She was in the front row, dancing her heart out and doing what she loved most. In one split second, all of that happiness ended. Through the parade route at an incredibly high speed, I saw your pickup truck approaching the girls. At that moment, no level of screaming could be heard because of the music playing in the background. The dancers did not see you coming, but I did. It was horrifying. These girls that I have become so close with flying through the air, losing their shoes, their hats, and their gloves, a sight I will never be able to forget. This is a vision that will haunt me for the rest of my life. I jumped out of the pickup truck so fast, not knowing where my daughter's body had landed. Once I was able to locate her body, I took one look at her and I thought she was dead. She was not moving. She had blood coming from her head, her ears, her nose, her arms and legs. She was not awake or responding. I was unable to keep my composure. With my shaking hands and through my tears, I somehow managed to call my husband. He had stayed home with our youngest daughter, who was homesick. If she had not been ill that day, she would have been, she would have been dancing alongside her sister. I tried to explain to my husband what had happened, but honestly, I don't remember much after that. Meanwhile, a man, who I believe was a spectator at the parade, came to my aid as I was trying to explain to my husband over the phone what had happened. This good Samaritan also had to keep me away from my daughter who was lying lifelessly on the ground. As her mother, all I wanted to do was pick her up and hold her. Yep. However, I was unable to because she needed medical attention. Yep. All of the injured girls from our team were being triaged right there in the middle of the street. I remember screaming out loud, asking what was taking so long for an ambulance to arrive. In hindsight, I realized it was only minutes, but during that moment, it felt like eternity. Yeah. Everything just seemed to be moving in slow motion. Samantha was taken to Waukesha Memorial in the first ambulance that was able to get to us. She was later transferred to Children's Hospital because doctors realized that was the best place for her to be at the time. And due to the overwhelming amount of injuries from your reckless and thoughtless behavior, Waukesha Memorial needed more space for other hurt individuals. The other people that you carelessly hit. Thankfully, I was able to ride in the ambulance both times with my daughter, hoping and praying she would survive. Once at Children's Hospital, Samantha was taken for a second set of scans to evaluate what needed to be done. We quickly learned that she needed immediate surgery, where they would do a craniotomy to relieve the pressure from her brain, brain swelling. When she came back from her emergency surgery, I lost it. She was intubated in a medically induced coma and her head was wrapped in gauze. I just wanted to talk to her, her to talk to me so badly. I wanted to hear her voice and know that she was okay. At that moment, I would have done anything to switch places with her and take her pain away. Mr. Brooks, how could you possibly do this to someone? I need you to listen to me yes. as I list her injuries. Yes. Acute respiratory failure, bradycardia, a skull fracture, multiple skull fractures, 
five fractures in different areas of her, of her face, including the mastoid bone behind her ear, the bones that hold her eye into place, a fractured cheekbone, a brain bleed, an intracranial hemorrhage. Oh, just her Did you hear? face. The doctors told us that they did not know what the outcome of her injuries would be. They would not give us any false hope. They told us they did not know if she would survive. My husband and I did not know what the rest of her life would look like. If she oh. survived, would she be able to walk? Would she be able to talk? We had no idea what the future would hold for Samantha. Our daughter was in a coma for two weeks in the critical intensive care unit at Children's Hospital. They needed to make sure that her brain was healing properly. Those were the hardest two weeks of my life. My husband and I lived at Children's Hospital, never leaving her side. We spent every, every hour of every day watching her body temperatures, her brain pressures, and the clock. Yeah. We spent Thanksgiving at Children's Hospital trying to find as much time to spend with our youngest daughter who was not allowed to see her sister because of COVID restrictions. Weeks later, once medical perf perf uh, personnel believed it was safe, she was slowly taken off her sedation meds. That was when her battle took a turn. Samantha is a fighter and she would, she was not about to let you destroy her life. Samantha had to learn how to swallow food. We spent weeks learning how to talk and walk again. Because of you, Samantha suffered a traumatic brain injury. She was unable to live a 14-year-old teenager's life. We struggle not knowing if or when she will have another seizure. Because of you, my daughter had her most beautiful hair shaved off. After spending 22 days in Children's Hospital, she was finally discharged. Finally being home with both my children was far better than Christmas morning. Even though it's almost been a year since this tragedy, it's still so painful to see her struggling with some everyday life experiences. Yeah. I consider Samantha a gift. Based on the injuries she sustained from being hit by your vehicle, she should have died that day. But she didn't. And for that, I am so grateful. My heart goes out to those families who were not as fortunate. Since the first day you appeared in this courtroom, you have, been, you have done nothing but make a mockery of Tell this him. trial. Tell him. I sat here every day listening to you act like this was just a game and showing no remorse for what you did. Tell him. I have no forgiveness in my heart for you. You're not going to woosaw your way out of this, Brooks. You said as a father it hurt because you could not hold your babies, but yet you run over my child like she didn't mean anything. What kind of father does that? Because of you, our lives have been changed forever. Whatever pain you may encounter in prison will only be a fraction of what Samantha endured after this tragedy. Judge, we ask that you give Mr. Brooks the maximum sentence for each count without the chance of parole. Thank all, you. sentence him to all. Thank you for being here. We should be getting towards the end. They're checking to see if there are any more victim impact statements. And then I anticipate the DAs will ask for their sentencing recommendations because after all of this, they still have to do their job and then they will probably recess for the day. The court said that she will do sentencing tomorrow. Daryl Brooks will have an opportunity to speak tomorrow if he chooses to. We will see if he wants to or not. I imagine he will want to based on what we saw of his opening and closing. Yeah, hydrate your honor. We have one more statement. We all need to, we all need it. Um, I'm almost done with I, this. Um, Oh, I left my pictures in the hallway. That's okay. Here are my pictures. You can go get them. Nobody's in a hurry. Yeah. You have time. You have time. Sorry. You have time. So, um, Jennifer asked, did his family speak this morning? No. The defense will go tomorrow. So if he has anyone, they will speak tomorrow. 
and I imagine the DAs will finish speaking today. If the court wants to break, this court's been going kind of late sometimes. Um, they'll probably just just uh, wrap up with the DAs making a statement asking formally for sentencing. Yeah, but the one, D- one at a time. There's just two. The DAs will have time to say their piece as well. So, um, am I going to stream tomorrow? Yes. When we know what time the court's coming back tomorrow, I will stream tomorrow. We're all going to take a deep breath and we're going to do it again because that's what you do. So, um, let's see. Did he have any family make Kate, a statement sorry. on his behalf? That will be tomorrow no, if I he does. That in the hallway. Um, this is our daughter, Olivia. She is the baby of our family. Um, that photo was taken on November 21st, 2021. At that time, she was an innocent eight-year-old who was excited to get to perform in the the parade with her best friend and her teammates. Kids love being And it was parades. something she looked forward to every year. Um, my Kids mother-in-law and myself and I also um, join her every year and hand out candy. And it's something that's become, um, I guess, a tradition that... Um, was taken away from us by by Daryl Brooks because of his selfless <clears throat> yeah just a, a ability to to have please don't do that it's so disrespectful tell I've watched him. all day on TV tell him and I've watched tell you him. mock all of the victims all day you roll your eyes and you make faces if this was your eight-year-old daughter that someone else hit you would have been beside yourself if someone made those faces and you want people to have forgiveness for you and your child you're insane i hope that that the judge puts the most amount of of years on your sentence and i hope that you live in hell for the rest of your life for what you have done to all of these victims do you realize after you hit me and my mother-in-law I spent five minutes walking around looking for my daughter on the ground. I was looking for her through little girls that were keeled up in little fetal positions because you had ran them over. You hit them with 3,300 pounds and you don't care. Right before you hit me, I turned around and I looked at you. I didn't see your car. I saw the look in your eye. You knew exactly what you were doing. You knew exactly what you wanted to do. And that was because you are a narcissistic piece of shit that thinks you can get away with everything. And you are not going to ever get away with anything ever again. Tell him. You did what you wanted to do, which was instill fear and horror in all of these children that are involved. You're a child killer. Yeah. A woman killer. I cannot wait until somebody inflicts that harm on you. I'm done. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. He needed to be told. I'm done. You don't apologize. He needed to be told. That's Olivia. And the next one is my daughter in the hospital room. He needed to be told. Where I sat next to her for five days where she didn't move. My daughter who was in the ICU for five days and in and, and, and children's for an additional nine more in the critical care unit because of her brain injuries that you caused to her that she still deals with daily. I was late because I couldn't leave her because she didn't want me to leave because of her separation anxiety that you caused. You should not be allowed to be a father to your children. I'm so glad that you are being kept from them. The shit you would teach them would make them as as evil and miserable as a person that you are. You can feel, you can feel it. She was going to give a different impact statement. 
and he okay. started making faces and she was like you know what fuck that this is what i'm going to say i believe that that concludes the statements your honor that Thank you. was probably the right statement to end on attorney operates 456 do you want to make your statements yet tonight yes whatever the court wishes your honor i probably have about 15 minutes worth of comments but how many 15, 15 minutes we got left. it um i'd like to have you conclude yeah tonight. i would too i just want to take just a short break um before we no, it's do 15 that minutes. we can um, do it i think we all could use probably a i think the judge a needs a breath break and a stretch break and then we'll be back in about five ten minutes uh, you. to hear your remarks okay so we've got about a half an hour left um and you could tell she had a um she had a prepared statement the last the last mom who spoke whose child was injured but she and her mother-in-law were also injured and he started acting up and she just laid it down just laid it down she was like i you know what fuck and and just just said how she felt said exactly how she felt and I'm sure it's cathartic to see a lot for a lot of you in the chat who are feeling the big anger. Uh, the big anger is there. The big sorrow is there. And she just unhinged. So what we're doing next, court is on a break. I'm not sure what time we're going to reconvene tomorrow. I'll let you know when I know. I'll populate the stream this evening um, so you can set a reminder. The DAs are going to make their statements about the case and then ask for the sentencing. They will probably, I imagine they're going to ask for 800 plus years, plus like six life sentences without parole. And I imagine he'll get sentenced to that. Um, Sanio, it happens on occasion. It, ha it happens on occasion. Um, the restraint it takes to have the person who did this right there is, is, is hard. I would imagine for families it's heavy, but it, it can happen. I have seen more fights between defendants' families and victims' families um, when they're sitting in the courtroom together um, after court and some in, in very large ways. And that's that can be also very, very difficult to mitigate because you understand why people are so angry. You get it. You feel it. You're like, I, I totally get this. So Louise Lemon said, I never... Um, I never thought before now how tough this is on lawyers and judges uh, makes them fight even harder. Thank you to the judicial team. Yes. And I, I don't stream um, a lot of criminal just because I, this was, this was my work and, and it's still something that you carry, but going through this trial, um, so many of you said that watching this was easier in community based on what you've been through, based on being a part of the, the Waukesha community, um, based on your own trauma, your own work. And I knew that when we started covering it, really to explain what a pro per was and what a sovereign citizen was and explain what was going on in court, that once we got to the verdict, there was no way we weren't going to get through the victim impact statements together as a community because we're not doing this alone because fuck, that would be terrible. We don't want to do that alone. And that the only way to do this was in community, even though I tend to not stream a ton of criminal stuff. But if if you've never watched a full criminal trial before, all the way through to the end, all the way through to victim impact statements, it's hard to really understand our system, I think. And so it was important to give a space for that where we can be in community together and talk about it together and watch it together and also be in support um, there are, there are a lot of trials that have gone on this year that we could have streamed that I could not stream and chose not to, but this, this one was needed. So with that, we are going to keep going. Um, the judge is taking like a 10 minute break. Um, it's hard. This it's hard. These things are hard and, and it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's so hard. Victim impact statements are so, so hard. And you can see the drain on the DAs. You can see the tears from earlier. You could see the judge blotting tears throughout various points. You can hear uh, the pain. You can hear the anger, the sorrow, the strength, the numbness that people are still going through. This case, I know there was one of the victim impact statements that said I was frustrated every time there was a delay. This case in the world of criminal cases has gone forward so quickly. 
so quickly, so much more quickly than a lot of cases of this caliber of this size. I mean, this is 70 plus counts, six counts of homicide. So this case went from incident to verdict to impact to sentencing in a year. That is not the normal. Um, and that is very much a quick, a quick trial. Um, Linda Larson says, is it normally with such a majority of female speakers? It it's, it's, there's never a normal to victim impact statements. It just depends on what the crime is and depends on what happened. So there's no normal. The statements are normally from those who were impacted and depending on what happened, those, those are who were impacted. I mean, this was, there, there truly is no normal because victim impact statements impact people who are in, you know, the ones who are impacted by the crime. Is there any limit on victim impact statements? No. Um, the judges do tr try to limit threats of harm. Um, we heard one of the victims say, I wish I could just punch you in the face. I'm, I'm sure they feel that way. I'm sure lots of people feel that way. The, the judges try to tamper down, you know, death threats, but there isn't, there isn't really a specific limit. Most people express, find a way to express their rage, their sorrow, their pain, um, staying within within the appropriate bounds. And we we saw that today. But if you watch other cases, you will see much more angry statements. So uh, with that, um, can his family impact statements be against him? They can say whatever they want. So his family can say whatever they want. Do we need to go back to Minton's the murder case? Do we just, do we need to go back to that? Um, when does the murder trial start? January. And Murdo, I really want to see the testimony. There's there's a lot of evidence I'm very curious about what's going on. And it's a very different kind of a trial. Uh, heartbreaking, heartbreaking charges, but very, very different. Um, so Jenna D said part of the damage of trauma is dealing with it alone. And that's one of the things that with this, this community has each other. And, and our community has each other. But this community in Waukesha, there were so many that were impacted by this directly. Different than then I don't know, like on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills this year with Dorit having her home broken into and being held at gunpoint. Others, yes, others in the world have gone through that, but there was no one, she went through that. She, she went through that by herself with her kids and outside of a support group, there's no one who walked that moment of your life with you. With this, there was so much damage, but... You've heard so many stories today of community um, where people are walking through this together because others have been through it. And that is um, a huge thing when you aren't alone. And it's why victims of crime need, need to find support groups, need to find support groups, need to find support groups. Um, someone asked and then the chat went like whoosh and I didn't see it. Will I stream the Jen Shaw sentencing? No, it's a federal case. It won't be streamed. Um, I might go. I might go if I can. So I might go if I can, which it's going to be, it's going to be long. Um, LB said, my heart is so heavy with the victim's pain. I simply can't imagine the extent of their pain. Thank you for holding our hands through this. It's, I, I feel like particularly with the job I worked for so long that I can help cover, not just help cover this, but help walk through it. It's, it's difficult, but necessary, I think, um, to understand the full impact of things that we're talking about. So, oh, Jen Shaw pled guilty. And I think there's something, though it's, it's hard. I do think it's important, um, to go through it. So that's part of it, part of why we're going through it together, because I think, it's important and I think that it matters and I think being in community to talk about it matters though it's not something I would like to do all the time it it sure it sure is not it's part of why I didn't cover the Parkland case closely I cannot cannot just cannot um it, it's hard it's just back it's so hard all right the judge is back an attorney upper um you may these are the DA statements provide the court with your sentencing recommendation thank you judge um Obviously, uh, I'm very grateful to the court for its patience and listening um, to all of these victims here today. It was 
very, very important that you hear from them directly and uh, the stories that they shared with you, um, really very personal and very compelling as to the impact that this crime had on so many people on so many levels. The, the focus of my comments, Your Honor, will briefly uh, speak as to Daryl Brooks and his prior history because I think it's important there's a record of that. Um, but I don't intend to spend a lot of time on Daryl Brooks because I think what's already been said is the most important message that I'd like this court uh, to think about overnight as you consider your options here. I will tell the court as to Mr. Brooks' uh, prior record, the court is aware from the bail jumping charges he's pending on several felony counts in Milwaukee County, uh, 21 CF 5020. He's charged with intimidation of a victim, that being Erica Patterson, and felony bail jumping with an offense Another. date of November 8, 2021. Two, two bail jumpings. He's pending on case number 21 CF 4596 with an offense date of November 2 of 2021. Charged there with resisting obstructing, felony bail jumping, second degree recklessly endangering safety, domestic battery, and domestic DC. That is the case where he is alleged to have struck Erica Patterson in the face with a closed fist after an argument. And then as she was walking away, intentionally ran her over with the same 2010 Ford Escape that he used in this attack. <coughs> When the police went to his mother's home and found him there. This is the whole he, story. He uh, was in the Ford as they approached. He got out and tried to run into the house. He ignored their commands to stop. He tried to flee and uh, eventually was apprehended. He lied to them and said he was not driving the Ford SUV that day, even though there was evidence to the contrary. That case is pending in Milwaukee County. He was released on $1,000 cash bail in that case on November 19th of 2021. November 19th. There's a third file pending. Two days. 20 be CF three 2550. Days two days before. The charges are two counts of second degree recklessly. I'm sorry, reckless use of a weapon. The law notes always restore my faith in humanity. The date of violation is July 24, 2020. He was released on cash bail in that case in March of 21. In that case, the allegation is that he got into a fight with his nephew. And as his nephew was leaving the area, the defendant fired one shot from a handgun toward the vehicle that his nephew was in. The vehicle was occupied by one other person. These are his other pending cases. Counts. The next day he was taken into custody and a loaded Beretta 9mm handgun was located just a few feet away from him. That handgun had previously been reported stolen. I believe he has court on those files later this week in Milwaukee County, Your Honor. As far as convictions are concerned, there's a 2012 conviction from May, May 15, 2012. Resisting obstructing misdemeanor in Milwaukee County, sentenced to 30 day, 37 days jail consecutive to any other sentence. 423 of 2012, there were two files disposed of in Milwaukee County. One of them charged uh, misdemeanor bail jumping and possession of marijuana. We'll talk about bail jumping he at the break. He was sentenced to 180 days in the House of Correction on both counts concurrent. I'll explain. There was another file for felony possession of THC as a second or subsequent offense. Which is he was dumb. also sentenced to 180 days in the House of Correction for that file. I'm sorry, what was the conviction for? A felony possession of THC as a second or subsequent <clears throat> offense. Just can we give people more time for the guns and less time for On the April weed? On April 30, 2010, he was convicted in Wood County Thanks. of strangulation slash suffocation. <sighs> with other charges for battery and criminal damage to property dismissed and read in. There was a withheld sentence for three years probation. That was a suspended Ultimately, sentence. Ultimately, it was revoked in 2011. Probation was revoked. And he was sentenced to serve 11 months jail. 
2009 conviction from Manitowoc County for misdemeanor obstructing, sentenced to two days jail, time served. 2005 conviction from Langlade County, actually it was a, a county ticket for disorderly conduct. He never paid the fine on that, so he ultimately served 30 days jail. 2003 conviction in Milwaukee County for resisting obstructing, 20 days in the House of Correction. Yeah, they're going to go through your whole record. 2002 conviction, Milwaukee County felony possession of THC, second or subsequent offense, 50 days in the House of Correction. 2000 convicted of substantial battery, party to a crime, sentenced to prison, withheld, and so three suspended? years probation imposed along with oh. six months of condition time. So three years probation. That probation was prison. ultimately revoked and he was sentenced to prison. Oh, prison suspended. That's his record from the state of Wisconsin. He has a record from the state of Nevada. June of 2016, he was charged with a sex offender registry violation. So he didn't Failed register. Failed to appear in court on that offense. Failed and to register when he was supposed to register. currently an outstanding warrant for his arrest active in the state of Nevada. Well, he'll get there eventually. 2007, he pled guilty to statutory sexual seduction as a felony. A suspended sentence was ordered for 36 months probation. That's what led to the uh, sex offender requirement, uh, registry requirement, which he is currently non-compliant with. In December of 2006, there were two files disposed of in Nevada. Uh, one was uh, domestic battery as a misdemeanor. He received a suspended sentence and the other he was suspended, found guilty at trial of suspended obstructing sentence means you misdemeanor go on and probation to jail. If you don't complete your terms in the, the state of Georgia, imposed. he has a conviction from May of 2021. I'm sorry, not a not a conviction, an arrest from May of 2021 for misdemeanor battery, domestic violence. The disposition of that case is unknown. And uh of it's course, there's a paternity action that was pending here in Waukesha County that uh, had been uh, a warrant or capius had been issued for him on at least eight occasions during the life of that file. That's a 2003 case. He was Should sentenced to jail violations? on several occasions for failing to pay child support. He uh, was once allowed Huber privileges on a jail sentence, but had the, those Huber privileges revoked in 2009. Most recently, there was a warrant issued in August of 2021, and uh, Judge Maxwell signed an order to lift a stay of a 120-day jail sentence. That is the extent of his criminal history that we are aware of, Your Honor. Um, I think it's very plain on its face. He's a lifelong criminal. He is someone who has repeatedly, continuously uh, disobeyed law enforcement based on the resisting, obstructing uh, type charges. There's multiple counts of bail jumping, disregarding court orders, disrespecting court orders. There's multiple acts of violence. There's weapons violations. This man has a history and a pattern of engaging in violent, dangerous behavior in the community. And it was no different on November 21 of 2021. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the attack. And I choose to call it an attack instead of referring to it as the parade, as somebody mentioned. There's nothing wrong with the parade. The parade is good. The parade is the embodiment of a community. That's what you expect to see at a parade is children at a parade, families, people from all over the area coming together for a joyful, happy event. The parade will continue. It will kick off again in a few short weeks. And I hope and pray there's joy and laughter and kids in the street collecting candy. That's what it should be. So 
I'm not going to refer to this case as the parade. I'm going to refer to it as what it was, an attack. And the facts are very clear, Your Honor. Keep rolling your eyes, dude. Very few of the victims who were struck had any idea this car was barreling down on them. Yep. It's an act of a coward, plain and simple. They had no way to know it was coming. And he mowed over them yep. and ran them over without any ability to defend themselves. What is so offensive about this conduct, Your Honor, is obviously the sense. violent nature of it. But even more so, the defendant's conduct and behavior in this court, his complete lack of yeah. uh, regard for the decorum of the court, the respect of the court, and I don't mean you personally, of course, you deserve that as well. But I mean, for the sanctity of the court, the courtroom, the process that we as Americans respect and treasure and protect for well over 200 years. And he can't engage in the most civil behavior as being quiet when another person speaks. Many, many people came into this courtroom over the course of the trial and the proceedings, every one of them was able to sit and obey the court's order. If you ask them to stand up, they'd stand up. If you ask them to sit down, they'd sit down. If you yeah. told them courts in session, be quiet, they all would. Everyone was able to do that except Daryl Brooks. I think he was able to do it. I just don't think he wanted to. Well, I, I just think this is all part of his charade. This referring to himself in the third person trying to distract him or, or detract himself, I should say, from the events, taking absolutely no responsibility. It's the act of a narcissistic coward. Those words have been used here today and nothing could be further from the truth. He is a coward. I he ran like a scared little chicken truth. from this parade, trying to slither away in the dark of night but only to stop long enough and try and take advantage of good citizens that would help him. He calls and lies to his mom, right? The get DA me an is Uber. Pissed. I can't get into it. He lies to the officers repeatedly. We saw the time of his arrest. We heard the testimony from Daniel Ryder, a good man with good intentions and a good heart who took this murderer into his home and held him there long enough for the police to come and take him away without any knowledge whatsoever of what had gone on. He takes advantage of everyone. He's extremely manipulative. He absolutely thinks he's in control of everything. Including the courtroom. When in fact, as he sits here in custody, he's in control of nothing. Except yeah. for his own yeah, behavior. Mr. Brooks, be quiet. Yeah, Mr. Brooks, be quiet. I'm not going to sit here and be disrespected. Mr. Brooks, be Sir, quiet. I'm not going to sit here and be disrespected. Yeah, you These are. are. sentencing arguments and they can make them. So they I can, can do the it. same thing? Mr. Brooks. Shut there's up. There's nothing disrespectful. They are doing it in yes, a respectful way. Yes, it is. Okay, way. call me out of my name again. She'll, she will. The DA will absolutely call you out of your name again. She absolutely will. Judge, the, these are the facts. You heard from so many of these parents and She's so many of the skin. people Just that were there of that fight or flight, right, that kicked in. He ran. Yep. He fled. He tried to protect his own self. That's it. That's all he did. Everybody else sprang into action. Whether that action was to immediately account for their behavior, for their family and get them out of there to safety, whether it was good Samaritans and judge, I really thought long and hard. I had a video clip that I was perhaps going to show to you. Um, you've seen a lot of this during the trial, but I mean, it comes from the clip when I showed during my closing argument near the end of the parade route where the Catholic community had been struck and all the shoes laying in the road and things like that. That person that took that video walked down Main Street for quite some time and captured quite
quite a few images and it's really quite powerful, but I also thought it's really quite painful. But one of the things that was just so remarkable to us as we watched things like that was the average citizens that just sprung into action to save somebody else. There's a particular moment where there's a person uh, on the ground fervently performing CPR on a victim in amongst a pool of blood without any regard for themselves whatsoever. I don't know who this person was. I don't think I'll ever know, but it's a prime example of the good that came out. So many people talk this afternoon about good versus evil, and I definitely believe that's what this case was about. Daryl Brooks is the epitome of evil. He is uh, evil uh, in the person. Courtroom, please. No. The you community can sit. is good. Now, order the people are talking. good. I think sit. Be the best victims to are good. Mr. Courtroom. Brooks, I'm talking. I don't care about you talking. I don't care what you care about. I know you don't. Sit down and be you, quiet. No. Nah, Everybody yes. has told you nah, that. Nah, nah, Stop nah, nah. See, you got, you got it all wrong, Miss Opper. Judge, the community has spoken. This jury returned a verdict Keep in going, two Opper. hours. That's how open and shut this case was. Well, actually, it was Everybody right. saw it. Actually, it Everybody right. but Daryl Brooks. Keep talking, Opper. This jury you deserves you you know. to be commended for their conduct, their God patience, you know. their service. Mr. Brooks. I actually go to the other court. I'm not sending you there. No, sit and listen. That is not a place you get to request to go to. It's so when I you disrupt to. the proceedings. Sit She's almost done. I'm trying to disrupt done. the proceedings. I'm trying to go to the other court. He's courtroom. trying to disrupt. So she can finish saying the BS wanted, she got to say. I wanted to share something with you, Judge. This is something that came in on December 5th, of 2021. An anonymous letter came. Well, it's not anonymous. It's signed, but it's from a person we don't know. From another state from the state of Kansas, December 5 of 2021, this person took time out of her day to write a card to, it's addressed to the Waukesha community and it was sent to our office. And she wrote, we have been praying for the healing of your community. Please know that there are people who care deeply all over this nation. Yep. That's the kind of message Daryl Brooks needs to hear because I know during the trial, uh, there was a lot of cards, a lot of messages received in my office and in your office. Good, hardworking, decent people that respect the law, that respect human life, that respect their neighbors, that would take the time to comment and say, good job. We support you, Rare. we are with you. And you saw that strength behind me all day. Those young kids, children coming up. I mean, Your Honor, I'll say this. God is good. There's been a lot of talk about God. There's been a lot of talk about religion. Daryl Brooks brought the Bible into this courtroom. These children the audacity. are remarkable the for their audacity. strength, for their healing, their physical healing. We haven't met these kids before. We've never met them. We met them today for the first time. You would never know the serious injuries that they suffered as a result of Daryl Brooks by looking at them. Of course, there's much healing to be done. But isn't it remarkable that in a year's time, look how far we have come as a community. Look how far these families have come. These families, these victims that stood up and pointed to Daryl Brooks and said, you will not beat me. You will not knock me down. That's what we need to move forward with as a community, Your Honor. His behavior is done. We're done with him. He has yes. forfeited his right to be in this courtroom. He's forfeited his right to be in our community, period. There is not one thing that mitigates this sentence, not one. Oh yeah, the bailiff is he definitely scooting closer. He deserves an absolute maximum sentence on all counts consecutive. Look, Judge, you saw the videos. Yeah. This wasn't him plowing in to one large group of 50 people at one point in By time accident. and hitting them. It was linear. He hit one, kept going, hit two, kept going, hit three, kept going all the way down the street. That's consecutive sentences, Your Honor. That's intentional, willful, 
volitional conduct That's what the that jury warrants said. consecutive sentences stacked one on top of the other just as he stacked victims up as he drove down the road in complete oh. disregard for any other person whatsoever. Texting on my DA friends. We kept the kids out of the courtroom in the trial, Judge, but boy, it's impactful to, to listen to them today and realize this isn't just, you know, victim GG. This is yeah. a child that you willfully ran over with a 3,000 pound vehicle as so many people so uh, adeptly observed. Police officers, first responders, the medical professionals. It's kind of weird, Judge, because we're coming up on the anniversary, of course, and we're coming up on the weekend before Thanksgiving, which is the weekend that a lot of people pay attention to on the calendar because here in good old Wisconsin, it's deer hunting season. It's a lot of uh, families going out, starting their Christmas activities, uh, Christmas festivities, Christmas shopping, whatever it is. So it's kind of that kind of a weekend that comes around every year that on its own, it's not a holiday, it's not really a known day, but we all know that first weekend before Thanksgiving and what it brings, uh, we all look forward to maybe a short work week, spending time with family, getting together, and here it comes, and it's the anniversary of this attack at the hands of Daryl Brooks, but we're going to have an ability to move on from that. We have the ability, we have the tools as a community, Your Honor, to do that. And that's definitely because of everyone, everyone that responded to this incident, the first responders, the police officers, the medical personnel that got paged in on a Sunday night when we're all hunkered down, Packers had played, it's cold, it's dark, <laughs> And they all had to spring into action and, and respond. And there were law enforcement from all over southeastern Wisconsin, fire department, EMTs. No one paused. No one hesitated for a second. They just came and helped. And I think that's something that our this families, so our all community of it is so can build on Midwest. as well, Your Honor. To we were say, hunkered down to watch the Packers. Evil is easily overcome here. Daryl Brooks deserved to be locked up for the rest of his life. He cannot be trusted ever, ever again. I ask you to consider, uh, I'm not going to go into it, but uh, we had filed the other acts evidence, some of the language in that other acts evidence, the intimidation of the victim. It played yeah. out repeatedly in this courtroom. He tried to intimidate you. He tried to intimidate me. He tried to intimidate the witnesses. He tries and tries and tries, but he fails. He's not the strongest person in the courtroom. He's the weakest person in the courtroom. And he's not Morally intimidating. Morally bankrupt. That's what he is. His character is void. I, I asked Attorney Basie, what's the word I can use for low character? And then we came up with the fact he really has no character. It's one of the factors the court needs to consider. Protection of the public, severity of the crime, they all weigh heavily in a stacked sentence your honor consecutive maximum across the board consecutive max every one of these victims deserves that i don't know how we look at any of these victims and say well he got concurrent time on your case because your pain and suffering wasn't quite as bad as the guy before you or the girl before you yeah they all deserve that sentence that speaks to their count the restitution, Your Honor, I filed the paperwork. We are seeking restitution in the dollar amounts uh, uh, from my letter that we reviewed this morning. They talked about it this morning. Um, I'm asking under 973.20, sub 11, sub F. She switched right into the law stuff. Enter an order that the Department of Corrections shall, uh, shall. keep 50% of any wages Mr. Brooks may earn in prison and any uh, monies that may be paid on his books or canteen account and his direct commissary. those monies to be paid directly towards restitution. He should not uh, be able to work or receive canteen without paying down that restitution. Um, I also included in my letter the request uh, that should any monies ever be paid by contract to Mr. Brooks, that he should attempt to benefit financially from these crimes that those monies would be placed into an escrow account maintained by the Department of Justice and 
um, paid towards the restitution. The restitution in this case is ridiculously low when you consider it. And that's again, because of the generosity of good people all over the world that contributed to a community fund and uh, other individuals who generously donated to help these families pay for funerals and medical expenses and things like that. Can you imagine when you're, you heard these mothers describing what their children have been through? Can you imagine the medical bills on these? And he's lucky he's getting off with a $200,000 bill for restitution, Your Honor. I think he should have to pay every last penny of it. Yeah. He just said, who cares what she thinks? I think? also wanted to wrap up again, Your the Honor, judge, by saying... The judge cares what she thinks. You didn't hear from all the victims. Certainly, um, there were some that just cannot bring themselves to this court in any fashion, in any way. This is the investigating and, officer. Um, we ask you to keep them in mind as well, um, especially the Bill Hospital family. Um, Bill was, you know, walking in support of his wife's uh, team and trying to be in a supportive role as he had done on many other uh, occasions and lost his life for that simple action, that simple act of good that he participated in. Um, there were some groups that um, are not represented here today, but I know you heard their story at trial and you're um, aware of what some of them went through that maybe um, wasn't specifically addressed here today, but I just ask you to keep in mind that uh, we certainly prevented, presented a wide array of victims to you, but not everyone. And then certainly, as I mentioned at the outset, the community as a whole uh, absolutely demands justice for, yes. for the, these victims, these families, and for the community itself, that Daryl yes. Brooks has no redeeming value, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, what Mr. time? Brooks, as far as I can tell from the correspondence from your mom and from you, I believe there may be closer to three individuals plus yourself who wish to speak at sentencing. Um, he had previously said 20. we lost an hour or so today, although we did go late, so and arguably we gained it back, I still was thinking about starting at noon just to make sure there's ample time. Um, I will start. Noon work for everybody. Uh, the Zoom shortly before that um, the information has been provided to your mother and i believe she will provide it to the other individuals on your list who wish to attend and make a statement on your behalf so right at noon we will start that process typically um, i would hear from the individuals on your behalf with you can going hear the last, trying to just breathe but you tell me if you want it to go a different order that's fine. All right, and then I'll hear from you. I may take a short break before I come back out, um, or even a longer break, depending on the timing of everything tomorrow, uh, to just collect all of the final statements uh, and process them. Obviously, I'll take the overnight to process what I've heard today, uh, in addition to, to what I've already been doing wine. on my own. Yeah, we got you. Um, and I haven't seen any written statements on your behalf. Um, I don't know if anything came in today during this hearing, uh, but uh, I'll rely on the verbal statements that are made and then yours at the time of sentencing uh, or prior to me imposing sentencing, okay? Just say okay. I apologize. I'm, it's, it's very emotional and frustrating right now, so. Really? I apologize to you, Your Honor, and court. I understand it's, it's frustrating and I understand that. It's just very hard to sit in, you know, it's almost like a pile on. It's really hard so to I, sit. I, I like still it would. understand that I have to conduct myself uh, respectfully, so I, I apologize. I think the apology needs to be made to the victim, sir. Yes. More so than this court. Definitely. I was just referring to. <sighs> Stuff. You don't need the last word. All right, anything else from either party before we conclude for this evening from the state? No, Judge, we'll see you at noon. Thank you. From you, sir. No, All right, we are in recess. I'll see everyone tomorrow at noon. He, it's, just, uh, it's just emotional for him.
um, you know, not like sitting by your child's bedside when they're in a coma for two weeks, not like being at the funeral of an eight year old. It's hard for him to sit in court and hear about the damage that he has caused. That's what was difficult for Brooks today. You know, don't murder a bunch of people. And then you don't have to sit in a court and listen to the damage that you cause. That's how about we just how about we just do that? How about that? How about that? Tomorrow we will be back at noon, um, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Let me take a look. I'll tell you what that is, UTC. We might have to watch that Mittens TikTok again. I might need it. Um, let's see. 12 p.m. CT. I think we're in Central. Are we in Central Central Standard Time now? I think we are because of the time change. I think we're in CST, not CDT. Um, let's see. Which is going to be 6 p.m. UTC. So if you understand UTC, I don't. I don't. I don't. But if you understand UTC, 6 p.m. UTC tomorrow, 12 p.m. Central Time. Um, hopefully that ha that helps. So... I'm going to go through a few questions and then I am going, it's, we've been streaming quite a long time today. It's been a very emotional day. Um, we're maybe we'll just, maybe just one more time with mittens. Maybe we'll just do it one more time. So some of you might've missed it earlier today and then we'll move on. Some of you might've missed it. We just will mittens one more time because, um, I felt this in my soul because I would be this person. He's like, there would be a person that becomes a hashtag on Twitter. I'm like, the person might be me. The person might be me. Um, <laughs> cause I was like, a, love cats, Fred and George. But there was a giant cat in my yard when we first moved to Tennessee. I'm like, that seems like an awfully large house cat. And my husband's like, not a house cat. That's not a house cat. What we don't need to do is go out there and uh, and mess with the cat. Why? Because this. Why? Because this. Is the volume on? I hope the volume's still on. I don't know what the hell that is. Is it a lynx? What is that? I'll tell you exactly what that is. That is the pint-sized version of fuck around and find out. Facts. Even with that knowledge, I just know there is a white lady that will see that tail wagon and think to herself, if not friend, why friend shaped? But why will proceed shaped? to try to go boop the snoot of Mittens the Murder Kitty and wind up as a hashtag on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know what Danger that floof! Is. Is it Danger a floof! A if not friend, why friend shaped? And then as I tried to show this to my husband, he was like, what do they mean by if not friend, why friend shaped? And I'm like, damn it. Now I have to explain the internet to my husband. <laughs> danger floofs. Um, I see all of you that have, that have tagged me in the danger floofs. Um, <laughs> I love danger floof TikToks. I am on TikTok. I think Mittens the Murder Kitty um, is indeed friend shaped and looks very happy. Mittens the Murder Kitty looks, looks just, just delightful. Spicy floof. <laughs> <laughs> yes, boop the snoot. This, how many views does this TikTok have? Not nearly enough. Random guy in Tennessee. <gasps> Random guy in Tennessee. <laughs> we might have to be friends. Um, so that's from Random Guy in Tennessee. I don't know how many views that has. I don't, I don't. <laughs> the comments here, hold on. The comments here are so funny. I'm feeling personally attacked. If not boopable, why boop snoot? So cute. <laughs> it's me. I'm that white lady. You're right. If not friend, why friend she? boop the snoot of mittens the murder kitty i can't breathe it's just a baby it's just a baby it needs cuddles and a toy and a pup cup from starbucks that's a danger floof if not friend why friend shaped yep but i've already come to the conclusion petting something i shouldn't is how i'm gonna go out to be fair mittens is not displaying any aggressive behavior just saying it's me hi i'm the problem it's me no today Ticketmaster was the problem not any of us um not me going ps, 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 here kitty kitty if mittens not friend why is she purring <laughs> Any, anything can be friend with enough determination and <laughs> lack of self-preservation instinct now nah, mittens would be riding shotgun on the way to starby's for a pup cup anyway the comments are also sometimes we just need something that? else i'll tell you exactly Wait, what that ah, is that's the ah. pint size version of fuck around and find out anyway i will link the i will link this tiktok on twitter um the handle is random guy in Tennessee. So, you know, it, that's, that's it. We love random guy in Tennessee. Hilarious. Hi. 
I'm the problem. It's me. Okay, Emily, get off of TikTok. Are we going to go comfort TikTok later today? Maybe. Are we going to go watch the watch the internet melt down at Ticketmaster later today? Yes, because I still don't know if any of my friends have gotten tickets to see Taylor Swift, and I'm deeply invested in whether or not Mandy Matney got tickets to see Taylor Swift. I'm going to disassociate from this for a little bit um, and probably take a shower. This is what we're going to do. Just, whew. but that's why we cover things. I got my lawn or hoodie. This is why we cover things today, to do them together to do them together to do them together um emily my kitten just reacted when you made the cat come here noise the <laughs> fred and george do not react but fred and george found the crafting bucket upstairs and there are like this morning i i heard some of this last night but this morning there were um pipe cleaners like bright colorful pipe cleaners all over the house so the the kittens got into the the bucket of uh, of pipe cleaners. So oh, anyway, all right, we are going to do the things. Um, Jana said, "I volunteered a wildlife rehab. We just released both of our murder mittens. <laughs> we named them Hissy Missy Female and Bubbles the Male. Long story how we got that name. You're like you know danger the danger floofs the danger floofs have been released. We might need another danger floof cat. No, our cats." We just, our cats, look, Fred, I love Fred. Fred is not the brightest kitty. Fred could not be a danger floof. Fred is only a danger to himself because he's like, hi. And then he lays down right in front of your feet and he's like, it's me. And you're like, I almost stepped on you. Fred has collided with my body in ways I have never had a cat just be like, oh, I didn't see human there. I'm like, I'm not small. I'm not small. I'm not small. Oh, we definitely need, we we definitely need all uh, uh, dinner and like, I don't know. Oh, I might finish watching Phantom of the Opera with my oldest. We started watching Phantom of the Opera yesterday. We might finish watching Phantom of the Opera. My kid. And then I'm going to, we'll, we'll talk about bail jumping in just a sec as I, as I re recompose. Um, my kid's like, so wait, he, he kidnaps her and tries to brainwash her and then tries to possess her. And we love this story. We, we love this. We love this story. Um, and then when anyone tries to stop him, he tries to harm them aggressively. Like what, what, what? And I'm like, look, stop. You were thinking too deeply about Phantom of the Opera here. And my kid's like, this seems like a lot of red flags to me. This seems like, you know, the psychotic opera ghost. I'm like, okay, look, <laughs> look also maybe true, but breathe, but breathe. All right. Let's get into real quick. The bail jumping. Um, we're watching Phantom of the Opera, the 25th anniversary stage production, not the movie. You have to watch the stage production first. You have to watch the stage production first. So with that, the bail jumping. Oh, the bail jumping. It means that he was on bail and there were things he wasn't supposed to do on bail, like leave. And, um, and he left. So he was on bail and not adhering to the conditions of bail. And they kept giving him bail. So he was, so Brooks was out on bail. Um, do I wonder if the people of Wisconsin will, will re-vote on their bail laws after this happened? I don't know. That's what legislatures and communities are for. That's what community is action, action is for. Communities get to decide those things through their votes and through their legislatures. But he was out on bail like four times over, I think, um, when this happened. So he could have been in custody um, when this happened and was not. And that's, that's what some of those who spoke, especially there was one impact statement that blamed the DA and said this, he should never have been out. And I can absolutely, um, I can absolutely understand why they were so frustrated. So that, that, so that's what, that's what, um, that's what the bail jumping is. And that's why they were talking about the bail jumping. So that's, um, I walked into my laundry room and a bobcat was sitting on my washer, scared me to death. Was just like cat door for me. Okay. So look, here's the thing. That bobcat decided that they were also front shaped. They were like, that door is made for me. I'm just coming in. I'm just coming in. I'm just coming in. So that's what it is. Um, anyway, so that's what the bail jumping is. And, and that's, and that's, that's the thing. There is, Lots of debate over over bail laws. There are lots of flaws in the bail system. I think there's lots of room 
to make it better. Um, so I think there's room to make it better. But also that's what legislatures are for and that's what people of the community are for and that's what getting involved in your community means. Um, Yvette asks, how badly can the judge go off on Brooks? I think the judge will make pointed statements, but I don't think we're going to expect an unhinged. I don't think we're going to see the judge yelling. I've seen judges yell. I don't think we're going to see the judge yelling because it'll just, he will just lose his mind and then everything will get more difficult. I think she will make very pointed statements. So, and I hope to see it. Um, we'll see. We'll see. So let us, I'm going to do a few more, um, dog doors in Texas are a really scary thing. It sounds like a bad idea. Like, to have an access to the out. We don't have access to the out. I don't, I don't want the things from the out to come in, especially the Tennessee slithery things. There are Tennessee slithery things that could come like climb. Nope. 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 Um, so Anna said, don't tell the romance novel community that half their plot points are red flags. I will not tell them that. But when my kid is pointing it out, I'm like, yes, I'm not going to explain to my kid that when it's fictional, we can be, we can simp. Warren and I were talking about this. Warren and I were talking about this last night about Phantom versus Raul. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, watching Phantom. <laughs> and then we started talking about it. I'm like, look, is it, is it my fault that, that I'm very pro Phantom? Look, I'm, I'm here for running towards fictional red flags, just not in real life. But that's a whole other conversation. Uh, that's a whole other conversation. So I'm going to get to a few more questions and then we are going to go. Does the court personnel get emotional support? I mean, I could, this is a question for Dr. B about how those working in the court get emotional support because it exhausted him at some times during my career to give emotional support to me. I sought therapy. Every single jurisdiction is different, but most of the time it is left for you to decide how you would like to best seek, seek emotional support and unfortunately and this is why the um this is why a lot of continuing education in law has to deal with alcohol and substance use um a lot of people will keep alcohol in their desk and just be like tonight we're drinking um yeah so so therapy and people get to choose on how to deal with their own but it's hard it is absolutely hard. Lindsay said, I tagged you in a bunch of danger floof TikToks. I will go look at them um, later, probably when I'm taking a bath because we are going to need a bath tonight. So uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Dar this was from earlier today. Daryl Brooks thinks this proves bias. Daryl Brooks doesn't quite understand what, um, what the afternoon entails. He doesn't understand that sentencing is when you are going to hear what everyone has to think. Allison asked, why is DV a misdemeanor? Most jurisdictions have both misdemeanor and felony DV, depending on the injury and other factors. So in this case, there the conviction was a misdemeanor DV. He has other felony, I believe, DVs pending. So um, Jason said, thanks for sharing the link. I realize some of the international crew can't use the link. I am going to look at how, if there is other links for tomorrow, um, some of the GoFundMe links I got did not seem like legit GoFundMe links. So I'll be looking for other links to share. And then the Law Nerd community, um, after all of this, I will be making a donation on behalf of the Law Nerd community. So we can do that too. And I will look and see if we can just set up the stream as a charity stream where the money doesn't, where YouTube doesn't take a bit and it just goes through. But I need to take a look and set that up and did not have the bandwidth um, to make sure it was the right one. But I will. I have the chance to go look. I didn't realize the city had one set up. Can some of the victims sue the state civilly because he was offered bail? Uh, no. So they were performing a government function. So no, they can advocate for laws to change. Question, can these judges uh, that release violent offenders be held accountable? Not if they're following the law. So not when they're following the law. That Those tend to be actions for legislatures. So... Uh, let's see what else question. Will the judge make him take his mask off for the sentencing? Probably not. I don't think the judge will, um, for try to force him to do anything except sit and listen. Uh, Violet said my family wasn't able to get justice for what happened to our family members who were victims, uh, to Miles Sanderson. So I am rooting for these victims. And although it won't remove the trauma and pain, I hope he's put away. So this can't happen to others. I hope so. And yes, him, him getting um him getting sentenced doesn't change anything. One of the victims said, "This doesn't really this doesn't do shit for me." 
I still am growing up without a mom because of what he did. So he can get sentenced or whatevs, but it doesn't change the pain that I have to walk through. And that's true for all of these victims. Him getting sentenced doesn't change the pain that they have to walk through. And we heard a lot of that today. Um, I'm crying at the meme uh, murder mittens. Yes, I'm ready for all of the the danger floof memes. I'm ready for floof memes. I'm ready for pawn nerds, all of it. Um, Nicola said, I just love you, Emily, and this group of law nerds so, so much. I'm so glad I've got y'all to watch this hard stuff with. Uh, you're such good eggs. This is a whole a whole community of good eggs, and I think that it matters. Can you bribe it with catnip? I think that's the ideal ideal approach to to the danger floofs. I think catnip is the perfect the perfect approach to danger floofs. I think so. Um, Janice said, "Remember, his mother Don Woods has bailed him out every single time, and I think that's why one of the one of the victim impact statements also said that they they held her responsible as well." Um, when they talked about that. So did Erica make a victim impact statement? No, she did not. I don't know if she will make a statement at all or tomorrow. I'm sure she is exhausted and done. And I'm hope that Erica is able to also heal, put this behind her and, and move on. It's going to be harder. They have a child together and that is going to be harder emotionally for her, but I hope she has absolutely the support, um, the support that she that she absolutely deserves. Uh, Little Truth said, Emily, this is so important for exactly the reasons you're saying some other channels were only interested in the spectacle of Brooks. You've made sure that for a lot of people, the real story is seen. I've tried to. I mean, there's definitely times I've been really frustrated with his antics, but I also don't think his antics are something that's okay because, again, as I come from the perspective of the job that I did for so long, and I knew that that the antics were going to also hurt the victims the same way. I know that when like, you know, in a a horribly non-analogous way that the things Erica Girardi does on real housewives and on social media impacts those who Tom Girardi stole from. It's the same. And you heard it today. They said, we've seen your behavior. We've seen you. We've seen you rolling your eyes. We've seen you acting up. We've seen you disrespecting the court. We've seen you. And you don't give a fuck about the victims in this case. And they said it very, very clearly. Um, So his antics, and again, his antics aren't, they're they're just not tea. They're not funny. They're they're really, truly frustrating and sad to me. This whole case is sad. Um, And and it, it just, it's just a waste. I mean, for what? The, this entire community got shattered by him. He's going to spend the rest of his life in prison away from the kids that he's had. For, for what? And that is the hard thing about violent crime because it often leaves you going, what was, for what? Um, Anna, I wanted to answer this question. Thank you for asking. I've realized that there was said to be an active incident. There are certain words that YouTube has real fussy about. On the day of the day this incident happened and... Then what happened today, a phone call about that. So there was a phone call today um, making a threat or or talking about a threat. But the day of an officer tried to stop the vehicle and people heard that and didn't know what was going on because there was so much chaos and carnage and damage that when people heard gunshots, they did not know what was going on. Um, And they did not know at that time it was the police trying to stop things. Um, silver gypsy lady said, I want a black cat named red rum. I mean, I'm sure you will find a black cat. So, uh, Mark said, I know today isn't about you, Emily, but how are you holding up as we've gone through these impact statements? It's always hard. Um, I think I'm much better at processing it now than I used to be, but also for most of you, this is probably new. This is sadly not new to me. Um, sadly, sadly not new to me. And that is, um, something that I still work to process. So how am I holding up? I'm sad. It's sad. It's hard, but I'm glad. I'm so glad that all of the, um, victims who wanted to were able to make impact statements, that they were able to be in court and express how they feel that they are trying to close this chapter. The trial's done. You don't have to worry about the trial coming up again, about it being reopened again, about being called to testify again. It's they get to close this chapter inside of a year. And that is really, really important. And chat, I see you talking about the danger noodles. 
I see you talking about the danger noodles. Snakes will now, <laughs> snakes will now be known. Danger floofs and danger noodles. They really are. They, they really are danger noodles. <laughs> danger worms. <laughs> Octos are danger noodles for sure. <laughs> well, that's the official word from Octonation. So there it is. Octos are also danger noodles. I mean, danger worm. Are they danger worms? Snakes? Or are they danger noodles? Octos are lots of danger noodles. <laughs> but also very smart. Um, if you like Phantom, you have to watch Phantom of the Paradise with Paul Williams. Okay, I will make a note. I will make a note. I'm going to get to just a few more super chats and chats, and then I'm going to have to go. My voice is tired. My brain is tired. Kobe said, is the judge limited in what she says in sentencing? Can she address her opinions? It is the place for the judge to address her opinions. I have I have seen judge t judges lit into defendants telling them exactly what they thought of them. Telling them exactly what they thought of them. And um, sometimes it's oddly cathartic. So sometimes it's oddly cathartic to, to hear the judge just say the things that you're thinking. We'll get to see what that is tomorrow. Um, cat by hand paper cut tutorials or cut by hand. Sorry, cats on the brain. A hug to you, Emily. Um, the pain we all have is raw in you. I, it, it, it bubbles up to the surface uh, and you need to do it so publicly so we can have a form of comfort. Thank you. I, I don't always, I'm not always comfortable expressing emotion publicly, but we, um, we all talked about this and we've talked about this in case over case about not just processing through this, but also about being able to have the emotional side and acknowledge our emotions and have the logical side. Both can coexist. Sometimes we have to say, okay, I need you to emotional side. I need you to pause. Thank you for the info. And now we need to click into the logical side. Um, and in sentencing, we don't have to, we don't have to do it. So, Oh, snakes equal nope ropes. <laughs> I've never heard that phrase before. I'm team nope ropes. We're doing a poll tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have to do a poll about whether we're referring to them as danger noodles or nope ropes. I've never heard it. I also am not from like Texas. So I love, I love that. I love, I love nope ropes. So I really hope tomorrow the judge says, you know, sir, Daryl Brooks, I have subject matter jurisdiction. And with that jurisdiction, I am going to sentence you to 800 years plus life plus life plus life so um doesn't erica have a case against brooks that goes to court soon yeah there's another trial coming up for him um there's another trial coming up for him next week or the week after yes with erica um it's not all the way it's not all the way done for her so which is hard and i'm sure i i'm sure she's exhausted i'm sure she's exhausted and i hope it gets the sp uh support that is very needed chat. Thank you for the, um, <laughs> thank you for it. Wait, we can do both. Lorne, the Lawnards are so smart. Nope. Ropes equal non-venomous danger noodle equals venomous. I love that. And thank you for saying, uh, venomous, not poisonous. My 14 year old will be thrilled because I always get it wrong and then it gets anno uh, annoyed with me. So with that, I'm going to say good night. A huge thank you to our mods. Um, these days are hard. We balance the things we cover here trust we will go back to talking about a Californian suing over a Texas hot sauce that's actually made in North Carolina sometime soon and um and debating the the benefits of a nope rope versus a danger noodle because we all need we all need it I'm gonna save some laffy candy for uh, laffy taffy for jokes for tomorrow we'll do some more of the it's kind of hard with the cartoons I might need to find like a dad jokes book it's kind of hard with the with the cartoons to show them on screen because you know they really are quite visual um so that is that is important um yeah so that we will see we will see but with that i'm going to say good night lonard thank you for being here a huge huge thank you to our moderators for hanging in there i will see you guys tomorrow right before noon central time thank you thank you thank you i don't even think we rolled the intro today i don't think it matters so we're going to roll the outro cheers lonards stay hydrated we all lost all of the hydration through our faces today. I'm going to go get an ice roller and, and recompose. I will see you, well, a puffy version of me. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.